very colorful today. So thank you very much. Standard. You're very colorful. Yeah, usually I'm black. Finding or, Nemo. Or we match. <laughs> <laughs> like finding today Nemo. I'm, that's just I don't know. What deal with today I'm Nemo. <laughs> finding we have this, Nemo. We have this thing where we'll yeah. play and, and show and, up. It's the same. And show. we show up where we're in the same crap. <laughs> hey, whatever works, though, right? Ask me why. Especially in the Sidewinders. So you don't have a Nemo shirt? It was, it was more in the Sidewinders. Was he in the Sidewinders? Yes. Okay. I never got to see you guys. Are yeah. you still around? Uh, they are. This, they are. We are not. Okay. They are, but we are not. So half of them are still around? Um, Everyone well, but the two uh, of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, so, okay. so the original, the band that, that recorded the what record. What do they know that I don't know? <laughs> the band that recorded the record is uh, the only folks that are original there are Rochelle, Tom, and well, I hope so. It's Todd. Rochelle and the Sidewinders, right? right? I hope right. Rochelle's still around. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, they could be like Kiss, right? Oh, hey, we no. have a They could be the Jay Giles band. Exactly. Yes. With no Jay Giles. Yeah. No hey, Jay before, Giles. hey, before I go on, because we are live. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Welcome, my friends. On live. Episode number 97. Wow. Of the Cobra Cast podcast like of Bobby of Sharon and my Woo. buddy Dave, Billy and Steve from the great Moby Dick are in the house mm-hmm. tonight. Howdy, howdy. And uh, Dave was just up here. Not yeah. even like a couple he weeks ago. He lives here now. He lives here, actually. Yeah, I think, think Chris was going to make a room right down the hall. <laughs> Very nice. Right. Yeah. So, what's going on? How are you? It's wonderful. So Ready so for, for the weekend. So yeah. So, oh, yeah. You got, you got a big show Saturday. We do. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, back to the Sidewinders. So, you guys aren't in the Sidewinders anymore. No, no. Um, okay. I, we, I think I, I'm, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll speak for myself. And, uh, the Sidewinders was a great band, and, and Rochelle's an amazing singer. Tom is a great talent, and I think we just got burned out. We, we got burned out of it happens. doing doing co- uh, some songs that just weren't in our hearts, and, th- you know, that's okay. There's People go through different directions, and, you know, they're doing their thing now, and successful doing what they're doing, and I think we're pretty happy where we're at as well. So Cool, man. It's awesome. And Dave plays in every band in Austin, so yeah, every much. <laughs> That's why I'll, we grab. I'll be them, here actually. next week with some other band. <laughs> yeah, whoever, what, what? <laughs> the seat won't even. That get sounds horrible. The, the yeah. seat won't even get cold. I know. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that's right. I'm gonna put like a little a little you know, a plaque, a little yeah. plaque that just says Dave on it. That's right. It'd <laughs> yeah. be like Dave's the Friars seat. Club. Yeah. His ass has worn a hole in that seat. <laughs> yeah. So you guys got the you, big Moby Dick thing coming. You guys are back. With the b- the great Moby Dick. So yeah. Where, now where did Moby yeah. Dick go? Because Moby Dick was gone for a while. So, uh, and that goes back really to the Sidewinders, I think, because we were extremely busy with the Sidewinders, and Tom is extremely busy with the Sidewinders, and that kind of took the front seat, and as a result, we kind of were dragged yeah. along with them. So we were doing a gig about once a year. In fact, we passed a year <laughs> since our last gig. Well, like you said, I mean. We were. It was essentially the same people in both bands. You just sort of replaced the singer. You took <laughs> Rochelle out, yeah. and you left a, a no saxophone. But we brought keyboard, drums, bass, and guitar over. Put Bobby in front, and just played Led Zeppelin all of a sudden. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. So. So does Todd? He plays in Sidewinders. Yes. yes. Still to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and and um, at the time after, you know, I had been pushing to to get Moby Dick to play more because that's how I met Tom actually right was um through playing moby dick and, and he was the one who kind of initiated the whole blues band thing and and recruited me and some of the other folks in moby dick to play in it right and so I, once we got done with the sidewinders and we had a little bit of a break i i called bobby up and i told steve and i said basically hey we're we're going to kick this back into high gear again but we need yeah. to find somebody to who, who's capable of handling the guitar parts, and Bobby's like, "Oh, I know this guy you right call, away." You called him, and it's this oh, guy. Jesus he was the Christ. first call. <laughs> I was, I was like, "I know this guy have right you, away." Have you guys practice with him yet? We practice what four rehearsals? Oh, four no. rehearsals, yeah. Yeah. So there's a little bit of rust. I mean, just a little bit, but I mean, you know, so was there's so was a bit of homework one. for me to do. Yeah. Oh, a little bit, yeah. yeah I'll say so. this, man. He, Dave is 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 pretty remarkable. Uh, you know, I. Well, thank right. you. I uh, no, he he done his homework. Uh, yeah, he'll he come in homework. the next week and they're like, "All right, you gave me these songs. Now, would you like the recorded version from the album? Would you like the live version from seventy two? Would well, you like the live version from this one?" But yeah. when I learn songs, I do the same thing. Every time we like learn Kiss songs, it's like yeah. we're doing a live tour. Or are we doing like Love Gun? You know, yeah, right? yeah. I always ask that. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. things because 
Yeah, it's but the, like, well, like with Zeppelin, it, yeah. it's different. Like yeah. this kid will, I mean, Billy yeah, was the like, ending stuff. Right, that's a bit different there. And then we go this. So they yeah. came in and like, well, if we do it this way, then I'll play this. If we go this way, I'll play this. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing an amalgamation of the two. Half, well, half live version, half studio version. And, that, and that's on, really yeah. what the whole Zeppelin thing was about in the first place was, you know, you'd have the recorded version and then... By the end of their tour for that album, it was sounding they, they would add things and develop things, and yeah. it was completely an organic growth, you know. A lot of it was like impro- improvisation and just mm-hmm. jamming. A lot of the, the Zeppelin yeah. stuff was back in the 70s, you yep. know. So, which is great. Hell yeah, it is. So, you know, gotta love the Zeppelin, man. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. <laughs> god, yeah. And that plays also <laughs> back into what Steve and I were doing, you know, and playing in a blues band because Zeppelin they are blues. I mean, you could. You could look at it. Let me guess who that was. Guess who? <laughs> guess who? Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Um, hi, Bobby. Hey, Bobby, turn off your phone. Um, and, uh, you know, that the, we were playing together in this blues band, and we would improvise. And, I mean, that's how we really kind of became a better rhythm section was through yeah. the improvisation. And, I mean, right. now I think it's pretty safe to say we can turn corners, and we kind of know where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, before I get go any further, man, I went out Saturday night for a killer bill over at Hanover's mm-hmm. with 333 Blackheart Saints, a good yeah. rogering, and Sister Sledgehammer. It was like the night of drummers, man, I'll tell you what, because <laughs> every band had a killer drummer. Right. I mean, you got Rom, you know, Rom Gov, I never ever heard him play. I have not. Now, all the, a lot of those, but I don't Woo! make it out enough anymore. I really yeah. don't. I'm I'm become kind of a yeah, house Once you hermit. hit your age, it's all over. That's what it is, man. <laughs> So I, I, you know, I've become kind of a house hermit. So and then there's nasty, you know, nasty Nate with Blackheart Saints. That dude is just so much fun to watch. He's like he's like a a heavier set kind of version of Tommy Lee. Okay, great fucking we, drummer. What's that? Who are we talking about? Blackheart Saints. Yeah, who plays drum? I haven't seen them yet. Uh, his, well, his nickname is Nasty Nate. He lives in San Antonio. Okay, but it, okay, because there was Nathan Al. No, it's not Nathan Alvarez. Okay. No, okay, no, no, that's the other that's, nasty. Yeah. <laughs> But say, man, that guy can't be playing drums these days. Oh, he actually, well, he is actually still does play every now and then. Yeah, he plays, but he's a guitar player. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, and they just so come out with another record too. Confuse me for a second. No, no, I'm, it's I'm okay. not confused anymore. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Life does not just start and stop at your convenience, Dave. Yep. Or I'm, I was I was answering Bobby <laughs> actually. So coming <laughs> in all night. I don't know. Oh, he's, Jesus I, Christ! I, I think I'm I'm finding out if he can if he's if this is technically working. He's it's he's working. To, okay. Yeah, that's well, he can just go He's on like, I Facebook watch you guys. and just live yeah. comments. Right. Does, should he be on Facebook or well, be on YouTube? Well, uh, he can either either which either one. way. Well, the way that I here's the deal: everybody that comes up here. I mean, this is not like an interactive show where where people we ask questions and right. all this call kind in. of stuff. We don't do all. Hello, that. you're on the air. None of that <laughs> shit. I mean, I, I have phone calls come in and stuff right. that we we call people, but. The problem is when you got a conversation going, it's like, hey, ask you know, ask Joey what his favorite color is. And I was like, hey, Joey, what's your favorite color? I mean, it's, it gets to the point where it's, yeah. you know, it, it just takes away from everything that. else. Right. You know, and that's why I really want to get away from, from the Facebook. And I'm, I'm actually even thinking about even just videotaping the episode and then putting it up. Right. With no interaction from anybody on the outside. Because it, it's then just you get a pain a, in the ass. Yeah. Because I'm, I mean. Or what, or what you could do is you could say, hey, audience. Be cool. <laughs> just just <laughs> be cool. But you, know, know, but, but you know what happens is when you tell them that, they're not so cool. <laughs> right, you know what right, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. They're not so cool. That's funny. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, um, yeah, so I'm really kind of, I got a lot of different stuff that I might try out and, and see if it'll work because you're constantly getting, you know, outside in, you know interference from either people on Facebook or on YouTube or, or phone calls or whatever the case. So I might even just... Start taping it at a time when no one it, no one knows what time it is, right? And then just putting it up yep. and calling it a day, you know? Right. So we'll see what happens, you know. Everybody at home is going boo. Well, that ain't too bad. I we mean, you know. watch it live. <laughs> That's why we don't take the input. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's sort of it's sort of like this. It's sort of like to say like you're at a band rehearsal, right? Right. And there's like ten people standing in front of you, hey, and they're bird. like, "Hey, man." Play this. No, no. Oh, hey, hey, right. hey. What about this? What about that? I mean, you'd be like, you know what? Shut the fuck up. You know, I'm trying to do something over here. That's what it comes down to. Right. You know? So. <laughs> on to the, the next thing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but no, seriously, though, but it, 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 it start, you know, it's starting yeah. to kind of be a bothersome thing. Anyways, let's, we kind of got through that pretty quick. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Not that he doesn't love you, everyone. Oh, no. no. I love everybody. Everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, Round Rock Tavern. Round yes. Rock Tavern. Yeah. On Saturday night. Yeah, I've, ne- I've never played there. Have you played there? You've I have of been you. there. You've been you know there. I, I've gotten up with bands there, but... I, you know, I did play there once, but it was an acoustic show with Brett McCormick. Yeah, I've never but been to either. Like, we're, it's going to be a tight fit. Really? You think? It, oh, yeah. It, it's kind of small. Yeah. Stage? yeah. They like, don't have, they, I know they don't have a drum riser. Which is, I'm fine with, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I think drum risers, I mean, if they're any higher than a foot, I think it's ridiculous. I, the drums should be at eye level with the band. You I be think able they to should be 10 foot tall with cats on the front. Oh, so that's no. that's yeah. the exception. <laughs> okay. That's the work? only exception. All right. So other than that, other than that, they should be, you know, drummers should be at eye level so they can, you know, everybody can communicate because part of yeah. improvisation is being able to kind of read each other and say, okay, get ready because we're going to go, you know, we're going to turn here. Yeah. So, and when you're like isolated <laughs> In the clouds, playing to the sun, you know what I mean. It's like have you ever, yeah, have you ever seen that drum riser at the Oasis? Yes, I was. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of. That's uh, what he's thinking about. As a matter of fact, I had him sit in with us with a different band, and he refused to sit on top. So we were all in the same. Yep. Lower oh, platform. you didn't. You just. I'm not climbing no. up nope. there. Yeah. We were, I'm how not going to do it. How the tall is that thing? Like it's like six foot, right? Hundred feet tall. Oh, hundred <laughs> feet. Wow, that's pretty like, tall. I don't, I, like it's like, it's you're, it's to the point where you're not even part of the the right. venue. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a great venue, and they and I understand why they did it because they put the stage equally as high, so the 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 point of view for the crowd you have to be able to see past the stage to the drums. You know, they want to. Sh- it's the the I mean, the stage is like that tall. It's like you yeah, know, it's pretty high it's up. Yeah, pretty high up. So if they if they would have to rebuild the stage lower, and then build the drums maybe up foot above that but i mean th- i, w- I, I w- don't w- own the buildings like, I, w- I went up there one time because uh randy from uh well he's actually in you get, like, um, vertigo <laughs> <laughs> right and randy was playing with lc at the time and i went up there yeah. and i was like oh, i was looking down i go man if you don't have a monitor up here you're screwed you know you can't hear anything it's so far up yeah. you're kind of looking down on the guy now that's like, a place you know, i have played countless times and i've never walked up there i went up there one time yeah. it's, it's kind of spooky it's kind of no. so high up you know <laughs> But they also have the Bo's Backyard, which is next door, which is the outdoor thing, which right. is actually pretty cool. See, now I'd, I'd, I've heard that's a pretty cool place. I don't know yeah. how big I the... I think it's just recently opened, right? Last yeah. Year is it a decent-sized stage? Yeah, it's, yeah it's real big. Yeah. See, but that, it's, would but it's, good, that would be a good place to do it. But it's an outside thing. and it's yeah. I mean, the view's gorgeous. It's right there. I did a um, a mobile podcast f- with Trick Shot Trickshot, over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just watched it yesterday. Yeah, and um, it was really cool. I mean, but yeah. the, I mean, the stage is really good. There's a lot of room for people and everything, and... Yeah, I like outdoor gigs because you get the whole vibe of the outside, and it's kind of bringing yeah. that into the gig, and, yeah, and it's just cool. Ninety-five degrees outside. Okay, yeah, that that, that is right? the exception. Okay, okay, okay. But even still, even still, if you got a good sunset going and you launch into, you know, like rain song or something, it's yeah. all good. <laughs> it's a cool place, though. So. Yeah, but um, yeah, but it, it's funny because that that drum riser is just so high up in the. I, I don't know whose idea that was, but. In a way, it's kind of cool, but in another way, it's like, mm, so. It's cool if so you're. So now I need to get a big tapestry of the cats. Right. And next time I ever play there, just bring it. You should just bring it. it I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Hey, that should be the first place my Kiss tribute band plays. When there we you go. Before. There you go. It's convenient storage, though. Yeah. So they actually have storage underneath, so I mean, you can actually like walk they, in. Does somebody wow. live down there? Is yeah, that what you mean? You can <laughs> walk through, that you can put speakers down and everything, so I mean, it's all tucked away. So I mean, I get the point, but yeah. Yeah. I thought there was like a small <laughs> bar under there. All right, now that we covered the, the Oasis. Phantom, <laughs> the Phantom of the Oasis. The, the Phantom of the Oasis. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> like when, everybody, <laughs> when everybody ever talks, <laughs> starts talking about big drum risers, that's the, my brain just automatically goes there. Because no one in town, no one, no place in town has a drum riser like that. No. No. So King, king of the drum risers right there. So you guys are doing this Saturday. So you guys got anything else coming up? Are you going to like start doing this like on a regular basis? Or it's going to be like once in a great moon, great so, blue moon or whatever? Yeah, so so the whole point of this gig was to kind of get our get get the grease around the bearings again. And and I think that uh, rather than playing once a year, we'll p- hopefully play. I'd like to play once every six to eight weeks is what I'd like yeah. to do. Different either north, south, you know, kind of around – it's a good thing because I saw you guys over at Hanover. Is like, man, I think it was like the first show, mm-hmm. one of the first shows you guys did. Because Crystal made a bunch of shirts for you guys, yeah, and stuff. So that was actually it was, but I, w- I thought it sounded great. It was really cool at the time, you know. Yeah, they were it's good, huh? I've never seen them. 
Yeah. <laughs> Never seen them. Yeah, Never I wasn't part them. of that one either. <laughs> yeah, and so so we had a, a couple different people. Um, we had uh, Thomas Heritage on bass at the time. And um, and then of course Tom there was guitar. Tom, yep. who's great. Who is great, and and I mean he nailed the sound, he nailed the riffs, he nailed everything, and really I mean again did his homework. He's was as much of a Zepp head uh, as as I am, which yeah, it's that's you know that's a a feat I think yeah. you know I mean yeah. I grew up, I was the kid who listened to you know when they had the Zeppelin uh, hour on the radio, I was the kid who would call in and answer trivia <laughs> questions. And win the the little get the let out cup, you know what I mean, oh, awesome. or the, or the t shirt or whatever. So, yeah. So and he was just you know very much the same way, and and that's kind of how everything was guided. Was oh yeah, you know we're gonna do the ending to immigrant song from Perth in 1972, and and oh well, let's do this more like uh, the BBC sessions, and, and 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 he and I know would know, you know what we're talking about. And we would just basically say, okay, you're coming along. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, so uh, it's, a, it's really weird with the Zeppelin thing because when I was growing up, I mean, Zeppelin, I'm, you know, I'll be, I'll be 50 in January. So Zeppelin was a big, you know, Durham White when I was a kid. Um, but I never really was into him that much. Yeah. I wasn't. And it was really funny. It's like I was a big Kiss nerd, you know? That's what got me started. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But it was all. It was all it was all kiss all day long twenty four seven. Yeah, you know, yeah, seriously, absolutely. absolutely. So, so bands. I was like just saying this the other day. Like when I was a kid, I got into Led Zeppelin because you know my guitar freak, and of course you're going to get into Led Zeppelin. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like uh, you know, like a year or two of being into them, I'm like sitting there going, "Man, when are they going to put makeup on and start spitting fire?" <laughs> you know? Right. These guys yeah, are boring. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know, and then then you grow up and you realize, wait a minute, or at least Ace Frehley was completely ripping off Jimmy Page. You know. <laughs> Yeah. So you know, I'm a little kid going, thinking they're like equals. Well, I think that's when like they're Paul, not. You know, I like, think Zeppelin's well, like uh, Paul Stanley's favorite band, isn't it? One of them. Yeah, I mean, it seems like T Rex would be, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Kiss. Kiss was for me anyway. Uh, and I have a funny story. And Steve's tuned out. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but we're gonna bring Steve in. But anyways, let me let me just finish my thing real quick. No, so stick your tongue out real far. So you can do it. So when I was growing up, it was, like I said, it was all, it was Kiss all day, twenty four seven. So I mean, I really didn't like listen to like Aerosmith and you know I caught Aerosmith every now and then. I wasn't big into them. Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, all those bands. There was like ACDC I was sort of into, but it was all Kiss. But now you know, as I as I've gotten older, I've kind of embraced it all. And now it's a thing where for me, I don't know the songs like so in and out. I don't know the you know the certain versions of them and stuff. Right. You know, but I can. I went and bought the whole like the new remastered catalog, and to me, that's just you know, it's awesome. So for me, it's like I'm not burnt out on it like a lot of people are, right? Because when people hear Zeppelin, they're like, "Oh, dinosaur rock! I'm fucking tired of hearing that shit." And you know, and right? How many times can I hear rock and roll? And how many times can I hear you know, whatever? Stairway, Stairway to heaven. There's right, another one. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna say this right, but uh, yeah, I used to be roommates with Paul Idell. And he he's a huge Zeppelin and Aerosmith fan. Aerosmith's his main thing. But I was I mentioned some Led Zeppelin song. It might have been I don't think it was Dire Maker. It was, it was one of the ones that that makes you go. Oh, Dermaker. Dermaker. How? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I was uh, waiting for that. Yeah, Paul Idell was like, yeah, that's where they kind of lost me. And, and what I thought was weird was like just the way that I grew up. Like Led Zeppelin is one big body of work, whereas like Kiss is not. Kiss. Yeah, they got started different. playing some really crappy music for right, right. a while. But uh, to me, it's just like Led Zeppelin's like this big mass of work. But, it really is. But to some people who were growing up with it, there's uh, there's an era where they're like, what what are they doing? Is that right. one three? Yeah. Probably. I or, think that or, probably you know, confused Coda. a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, they they started off with kind of you know this blues thing with the typical. I mean, if if you remember at that time. There were so many other bands that were doing things like that. You had Vanilla Fudge, you had um, Rod Stewart and the Faces, and mm-hmm. even before that, the, the Jeff Beck group. Yeah, where Rod yeah. was the singer. Yardbirds. You know, you had the great classic guitar player and the you know the singer, and then you had the Who, and, and it was to to mm-hmm. to the people, to a lot of people, it was kind of like okay, here comes another English band with a blonde haired singer and a ripping guitar player who's got history, and and that's that, and and, but to, I think. There's a certain segment of people that kind of latched onto that, 
And for their first two albums, that's what they were. It was like that blues band. And then all of a sudden they come out with, with Zeppelin three, which is like, and I love like that record. It's a great I mean, record. It is, hell yeah, it is. It's a great record. I don't think they made a bad record. I, I don't think there's one that people like will say in through are, the outdoor. Are you going to say something? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people no. say okay. No, but people always tell me like in through the outdoor is like yeah. a horrible record. And the funny thing about it is, I remember, I remember when that album came out because I was like 12 when it came right. out. Right. And my I remember my sister buying it with you know had the the brown ra- brown wrapper on mm-hmm. it and stuff and all. That. And, I, and that's like, and, and it's a weird way. That's like my Zeppelin album. I play it all the time. It just brings back a lot of memories when I was a kid. You know, and it's a great record. Yeah. You know, but I don't think they ever made a bad record. I, I can't, I can't point to them and say, hey man, they made an elder. You know what I mean? Right. I, you know what I mean? One of those kind of things. You could say that. I mean, you could say that if you looked at it as one body of work versus another body of work. Like if you look at Zeppelin two versus say, Presence. Yeah. Which one is stronger? Well, okay. I'd probably take Zeppelin 2, maybe. I think it's a preference thing, but too. Then, you know? But then it's also, for me, it's a mood. Because like there's some days where Presence is like the album. Like, that's yeah. that's it. <laughs> um, and then there's other days where, you know, well, most days, Physical Graffiti is my album. So, But, um, yeah, you know, I think going back to the whole thing with 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 the strength of their of their catalog, um I mean, even Coda, even even the stuff that was like the afterthought, the stuff that yeah. they pieced together, that on its own is is a great record. Yeah, to it's me. better than most people's like debut albums, you know. Yeah, it's crazy the stuff on that. Yep. But I, I like my thing, Houses of the Holy. That's my record. I constantly play that all the time. At least like once a week, that'll be in my stereo. Yeah, at least once a week. Yeah. that's that's the one that I. Yeah, I mean, because like you know, no quarter is my tune. I just I, some, I don't know if it was because of like you know. The song remains the same, and that whole, mm-hmm. that whole thing with John Paul Jones, or whatever. But it's just a great song, you know. Well, it's such an epic too, you know. Well, and I remember when I went and saw Tool the last time; they opened with that. Yeah. You know, it came out with like a it was like a twelve, thirteen minute version of it. It's ridiculous. It's such great. an awesome tune. Oh yeah. And and just the whole mood behind it, and the and the darkness, and uh-huh. it, and you feel the cold. You guys it. playing that? Uh, we are playing that. Nice. Yeah, we, we, we are playing that. So it's uh, what I was going to say related to Kiss, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. Oh, here we go. go back to Kiss. So, you know, Dave Dave comes down for, for our first rehearsal slash audition, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. And zero preparation. No preparation. And <laughs> we just. It usually works, though. We just totally wing it. And um, it sounded pretty good. Uh, and then Bobby had to leave. Bobby had to leave early. Uh, and so it's just me. Steve and Dave and and we're in the room and we're like, well, we you know we might as well use up the rest of our time. So what do we want to do? Love gun. So <laughs> yeah, we played a couple of kiss tunes. We yeah. played. What did we play? We played Cold Gin. Yeah. And we played what? What was the other one that we did? We did one other one. And Steve has never heard. He was never no. a Kiss fan. I'm yeah. a, I'm deer in the headlight look. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Like, just follow. And he, and he, and never he played, played it great. Never yeah. played it great. That yeah. was was awesome. He played it great. And he had no idea. And and he's not. Like I said, I think yeah, I know it was more yeah. like we played the song and afterwards that was a kiss song. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> like you made me play a kiss song. That's <laughs> me right. alone. We made you play two, actually. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's like you know, I. Uh, that's the thing with Kiss because like everybody like kind of. I had a guy up here for a podcast and he's a younger guy, and we're loves Kiss, but he loves all the '80s Kiss. Oh no. Yeah. So you know all the stuff from Asylum and Animalize. Oh, that's no. all his stuff. And he's like. Because I goes, I don't like that '70s stuff. I, the '80s stuff is my stuff. He was pointing out all this '80s stuff that, oh, Jesus. that no, that I went, no, that I, no, that I went in. No, uh, no, that's after. I went to yeah, every show before. on all those tours, you know. Right. But it was all that glammy kind of stuff, and right. it was, you know, too slick and too polished. And you go to the show, you don't Vinnie, listen to the album. Vinnie Vincent yeah. and 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 yeah. So uh, I was dating this Bruce girl. Kulik. You know how when you go to like a Bucky's or something like that, there's like the rack of CDs that you can, you know, and it's like. But it's like not an album. It's like Kiss, and it's like got a little gray logo, and it's like the hits or something. Like you the know. generic ones. Oh, yeah, total yes. generic. Yeah, twentieth anniversary, the hits yeah. or whatever. Bless her heart. This girl was trying to, you know, hey, I bought you a Kiss CD to listen to when oh. you're hanging out with me in my car. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, and I look at it, and it's all from like, like Animal Eyes on. Oh and, no, and. You know, put so the there's like there's like half a good song it's on like there. I'm like, put the S in sex yeah. and stuff like that. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, that's when it died. Yeah, it was it was dead in '78. After '78, it was all done. 
I mean, so Steve, a couple, I, I, you're couple saying you're moments. cringe at the whole conversations about Kiss, and I, I, I just kind of defy you to drive around listening to Kiss Alive that's and then right. say that Ooh, it's awful. Shit. I mean, yeah, I, that, I, that album I, will I, hook I, you. I did not need all three against me right now. Just no, 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 no. I'm just, you I'm just, going, you want, you I'm just saying, us, you know what you might say? Us. You might go, well, you know, Agreed. they're kind of a, a cartoony ripoff of Led Zeppelin or what? I don't know. Or, you know, they're coming from different influences. Well, I mean, Led Zeppelin, Led Zeppelin for Zeppelin. me wasn't much different, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I, yeah. I also came in cold on that one. So yeah. you did. I've known, I've, I've previously heard two, three of the most Led Zeppelin songs in my life. I mean, I obviously knew Stay Away. Everybody knows Stay Oh, yeah, yeah. I've known because I played with another blues band. We played Since I've Been Loving You. And I remember to this day, this guy showed up because he thought he could play the guitar part. And he's like, well, we want to try this song. Bass is hard. I don't know if you can do it, but give it a shot. I'm like, you son of a... <laughs> I nailed that thing the next <laughs> rehearsal. I was in there. I had it note for note. And remember, there's no bass part. I mean, he plays it on the organ. Mm-hmm. So I had a little bit of freedom range. Yeah. But there was a there was a show that I've seen when it was just... And you're going to tell me what this is, but it was just Plant and Paige, and it was some other guys with him. Oh, the no quarter thing. Yeah, Probably. yeah. Mm-hmm. So on Wait, that it was one, it was called were, Paige Plant. Weren't they like in Ethiopia or some shit? Yeah, like that. So there was Somewhere a bass like player that. actually yeah. playing on Morocco that. Morocco or something. So there you I've go. learned what that bass player was playing on that song. That's what I'm playing to this day. Really? And then the other song we played was, uh, uh, shoot, I don't know these titles. I told you, the Ocean Thing? The, the ocean? ocean? Yeah. Damn, but <laughs> 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 the, the ocean thing. thing. The ocean thing. Those were the only That'll three work. I knew before they got yeah. me in. As a matter of fact, I mean, Th- this is know. how I feel when I fill in for cover bands, <laughs> you know, because like I just, you know, they'll go, well, we, the crowd's going crazy. We need to play the Nelly song. I'm like, which one what? is that? Ooh, how's that? It's go? one of the forty songs you had me learn, and it's like somebody hum a bar. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just I don't know. Right. Well, that's well, how I, mean, I am too. That, man. That's my story. Like I don't know by title. Just just play. Start yeah. playing. I'll, I'll join in. Well, that's how it was we with this Halloween party. About what I was on Halloween. I guess so. <laughs> it was Halloween. Wasn't <laughs> Pretty it? much, yeah. yeah. And they so I got up and played a couple songs, but they know a bunch of stuff that I've never played. I hear right. it on the radio all the time, but I've never played it. Right. So I'm like, okay, how does it start? And then he's over here like, oh, okay, go into it, you know. And people are like, oh my god, you're so good. I'm like, I guess. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's you know you hear the stuff on the radio a million times, right? And if you got any kind of you know if you know how to play it a little bit, I mean you're gonna be able to at least pick up how the time how the time goes, you know? Right, right. You know, well, so, he yeah. he actually he learned it like note for note, like learning. Jo- he's one of the few people. But that's what you told me to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. Because if you see a lot, I'm not saying a lot of you, cover you bands. You can't fake. He didn't tell me that. <laughs> there's a bu- there's 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 actual c- the cover bands that go out. And they play songs, and you don't know what the hell they are because they don't learn them. Right. They learn, you know, you you catch the hook of the song. You're like going, oh, I get it now. You know what I mean? But you don't. Yeah. But that's just it because he is such a Zep head. I mean, I had to get this right. I mean, to this day, you know, he'll notice if I do like a little nuance that wasn't some other version. or He'll listen for that one little note, and he lights up when I actually Mm -hmm. do it. So I know what I have to deliver to keep my drama happy. He got that, too, the other night when he was he was. Putting in stuff from some of the song remains the same, you know, versions. Yeah, you know, I, now, uh, you, I don't know. This is happening really fast anyway, so it doesn't matter. But uh, I, if we would have just said right out of the gate, song remains the same. But it's because not. Because it's mostly that. Is well, it? Yeah. Like, th- well, now what I'm doing is I'm just like like the first five songs of that playing it. No for much. note, not pretty no much for note. note for note. Yeah, yeah there's just, a lot of jammy funny. stuff going it on. Is. Yeah, so yeah. you should just call the band. The song remains the same. And just play that whole concert. Yeah. Right, that'd be it. That'd be the whole thing. So, so I, perfect. I used to be in a Black Crows tribute band. I remember and, that. Uh, which I yeah, wish I was a part of. I remember that. It, yeah. it was all a bunch of badasses, total badasses, and I was really intimidated by these dudes. But uh, like I, I was doing the Mark Ford thing. You know, I was doing the guy that wasn't in in open tuning, so I was doing all the solos and stuff. The guy who was like the best member of the band, you mean? Well, bec- they, Mark, they, Ford. Mark Ford, but <laughs> yeah. then they had Oddly Free, too, for a while. Uh, but uh, I, I learned a lot of that stuff just note for note. And then we do our first gig, and I'd like play the solo. And they're like going, keep going. Yeah. So it wasn't like a matter of really learning it note for note. Is wrap your head around the way that dude right. plays. That's dude, just try to think. It's not a stretch for me to do Jimmy Page. And I, I obviously love Jimmy Page a lot. Right. But. Yeah, but Dave, you're like the kind of guy that can you're you're like easily adaptable when it comes to like music. You know what the hard one is? I love the story. I might have told you this one, but uh, I, playing for De Niro Smith, the Aerosmith yeah. tribute band. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, like Robert De Niro, not like Money yeah. De Niro, but yeah. Robert De Niro, De Niro Smith. Yeah. yeah, our logo has 
you know, his, with the Mohawk. Because Lord knows you make a whole lot of dinero to plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should be well, called anti dinero the, right. the money that I spent on gear to be in that band, I, I, I don't know if I'll ever break even, but because I had to buy a special bass and everything for one song. Are you playing bass? No, no, I play guitar, but, but back in the saddle... Oh, okay. That's that's Joe Perry playing a six string bass. Really? Is it really? Yeah, I know. yeah. Was it's, it one it's a bass six. Yeah. Bar- I mean, it makes total sense. Guitars? Yeah, it, it looks like a, one of those baritone guitars. It's like yeah. George well, played, I never when knew he played that. bass. Yeah, exactly. Whenever right. John or George played, played, bass, uh, played, 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 played a bass right. six. Yeah, I never and, knew and that. And on I Spinal Tap, the green guitar is like, you've seen enough of that. Don't touch it. Yeah, That is literally a really really expensive guitar, and it's a bass six. It's it's one like I have. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's cool. Anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, like wrapping your head around the way somebody plays. Mm-hmm. Like the Aerosmith band, I still think I don't get it. Like the way that Joe Perry plays. Like like Jimmy Page has his licks, and obviously Ace has his licks and all these people. Mm-hmm. But Joe Perry's just like bouncing off the walls with stuff. And I, I was on the phone with Jace McMaster about it. I'm like, dude, I can't wrap my head around this guy. <laughs> and here's what Jason said. I laughed my ass off. He goes, yeah, it sounds like dolphins squawking. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you think about it, like Joe Perry solos are, you know, just, right? Yeah, coming from nowhere, and so it's just like you kind of learn it, and maybe just, what it yeah. is, you just you haven't done enough heroin yet. Something, yeah. You know? I'd think that he was just going for it and probably didn't really know a whole lot about what he was doing. He probably does now. Yeah, he probably so, does now. So you, well, you know that happens, like you know, like you know, there, yeah, you know, as you know, you know most successful rock band in the world forever. Pretty much, yeah. You're going to learn how to play that thing after a while. And at first, if you're just doing it from a very caveman approach, you know, and it's... Well, it's funny because... you, you know? Well, because you know on the second record, Robert Wagner's dad played the lead on Train Kept a Rolling, you know? See, I didn't even know that. Yeah. You know Robert Wagner, I got to... Yeah, I I I need to get... Sway, the singer? Yeah, yeah. His dad played on I need to get into... That's that's my... I've always been a big music biography reader and i haven't read what was it walk this way or whatever it was the big what was the mm. big book that that, that for, came out from them from aerosmith yeah for a, walk this way Th- there's a couple of them because i know that I, th- I know joe perry put out a record or uh, put out a, somebody from, a from that book. camp just put no i know joe uh joey kramer put out a record uh not a record a i made book. a book yeah. excuse me i'm sorry yeah um and then th- maybe steven tyler put one out but i know I for a fact that joey kramer has one that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I met him in at the airport in L.A. Who? When I Joey Kramer. Well, he used to live right over here, in Georgetown. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he moved. Did he move away? Yeah, he moved um, like halfway between here and San Antonio. Yeah. Like, but I used to see him at H E B all the time. Was he not? Or did you? Was he? Did you ever meet him? Did I met him like I, I went. I went up and said hi. to shook his hand like twice. And he, the first time he was cool. Second time he was like, nah, not so cool. See, he was a total dick to me. I yeah. was like 16 years old. Yeah. Now, granted, it was the night flight and it was back from Hawaii or whatever. I'm sure he was fried. You know, they had played there and whatnot. But he was just like a jerk. Whereas, <laughs> like, I, I actually met Steven Tyler that same plane ride home. We had a layover in Honolulu. And I ran into Steven Tyler and I said, hey, I really like your music, blah, blah, blah. And we wound up sharing a pack of gummy bears, talking about music and nice. yeah. all of that. He was great, and but 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 there's just I, yeah, I'm I, sure I he's listening to this one, and he's like, man, I'm sorry, I felt you. Know, <laughs> I, I treat you but like I this. think there, you know, Fuck there's you, certain Joe. people, <laughs> there's there's certain people that they they love doing what they do, like say like Joey Kramer. He loves he loves playing drums. He loves being on the road. But when it comes to all the adoring fans and he likes his privacy. Yeah. You know? Cause every time I see him, he's, he's, you know, he's been married to this, his new wife for, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight years, whatever. But you know, he likes his little private life and that's, you know, when people infringe on that, he gets a little upset. Yeah. Cause I had a, cause he used to work out over at the gold gym here in Georgetown. And my boss was like, um, he goes, yeah, he goes, oh, I cause he used to go work out at lunchtime and he, you know, do his hour and come back. And he goes, yeah, I saw Joey Kramer over at, you know, over at, uh, over at Gold's gym. And he goes, yeah, I was going to go talk to him, but, you know, I had three people around him, you know, and it's like, the dude can't oh, even wow. go and work out. You yeah. know what I mean? So right. it's like, it just gets to a point. I mean, imagine being him for like 40 years. No, without a doubt. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, after a while. What, what's weird is like, he's not like, you know, like Steven Tyler. I mean, that's the face of that band. I, yeah. I would think that Joey or Kramer could maybe dress down a little bit and not, you know. You well, know you got to like, he could make me... W- you know, well, going to Starbucks and walk out and wow, I made it. Nobody said anything. Right. You know, it seems like that could happen to him. That's never going to happen to Steven Tyler. 
Well, the first time I yeah. met, well, the first time I met Joy Kramer was it was on a New Year's Eve day, and I went to Specs to get. Whoa. Jesus. Uh oh. Amber alert! What you got? Amber. Oh, Amber. Where's San Antonio Amber? Amber alert. Yep. Knife on this thing. I have mine turned off. <laughs> anyways, can I have another beer? Yeah, sure. Um. So, anyways. New Year's Specs. I, I, I go out front and there's a brand new like Lotus, like a real white Lotus out front. And right. I'm like going, and it says Crame Dog on the back of the license plate Crame or something. Crame Dog? So, or something like that. It was like, or whatever. I'm like going, oh, oh. And, and I've been like, you know, Jones and I meet this guy forever. I mean, right. you know. And I'm walking in, he's walking out, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I said, hey, man. I said, you know, welcome. This is like at the time he moved to Georgetown. I'm like, you know. I said, you know, welcome to Georgetown, man. I didn't know what to say to him. I was like, Durr, you know. Yeah. And he goes, cool, man. Thanks. Shook my hand. He walked in. I wa- that was pretty much I saw him at HEB a couple of times. But, but when you drive around at like $200,000 Ferraris and shit, you know, in a little town up here. Right. Like that, Put your gonna, name on the plate. You're going to get no <laughs> dog. That, that's not what I, I was don't, just I don't remember if it was Crane <laughs> Dog. It was like you don't remember like me? Did you, did you all see that, uh, the uh, what is it called, the the big Rush documentary that came out recently? Yes. That was awesome. That's yeah. Way awesome. And this, the scene where they're like in a little diner and the lady wants Geddy Lee's autograph and she's like, he's like, you want his autograph too, Alex Lifeson. He, he's the leader of the band. Come right. on. Right. She's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Everybody recognizes Geddy Lee. And, right. Yeah. yeah. No. I, I mean, yeah, he but was I mean, like one of the few drummers I knew. <laughs> right? That's the thing, though. It's like, imagine, you know, being in that kind of now, spot. Now, he's, he's somebody that he's like, Okay, you guys love the way I play drums, but why in the heck would you want to come bug me? That's his mentality. Like, yeah, you know, some people love it. I mean, but some people fucking hate it. Who is, you yeah. know? I could, I could totally see that. I mean, I, I think after you get enough people saying to you how great you are, how much, you know, I, I mean, you know, essentially, it's just he's just very I, good at his job. Why you bother yeah. me of how good I am at my job? That's his, well, in, in a weird way, like after all these years, it sort of is a job. I people that are now. really good at handling adulation too, though, because yeah. like, uh, uh, like, well, I was seeing something about how Paul McCartney's like that. He's really good about disarming you really quick. Like, you know, he, you know, people just he's since he's been a kid, people freaking out on right. who he is, yeah. Yeah. and so he's like really good within five minutes of like, hey, just and you feel at home. Well, I mean, and you get like a, like a dude like Tommy Lee. Here's a perfect example of a guy that doesn't like to be fucked with. You know, he doesn't want anybody to take selfies with him anymore. Doesn't want to. I mean, mm. he goes, what? it's like, just well, done. I, I'm yeah. done. I mean, he's been famous since he's been like, what, 17, 18? Yeah. yeah. And he's like in his early 50s now, but he's like, he's, I'm fucking done, dude. You know, it's like, uh, no more fucking selfies. No more follow me around. Paparazzi. He's all, you know, his whole life has been paparazzi because yeah. he dates all these super hot chicks and, you know, they're all uber famous. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, a part of me, though, I mean, you kind of know what you're buying when you get, when you know, exactly. you, you buy the ticket, you take the ride, right? So, yeah. you know what you're, it's like, you know, what, it's, it's like, you know what you're signing up for, but you really don't know what you're signing up for. You know what I mean? You think it's going to be easy, but it's not. No. It's, it's it got to like be I heard like a Like a famous actor or somebody like, like Johnny Depp or Brad Pitt or something like that was talking about how, uh, I try to be nice every day, but the other day I'm leaving a parking garage and somebody cuts me off. I'm like, what in the hell? And, you know, and I'm just a person. Right. Yeah. You know, driving my car and the person's looking at me going, that's Johnny Depp. What an asshole. And that's going to be in like a, a magazine tomorrow. And he's like, well, that really sucks because sometimes I'm not in a good mood. Yeah. Just like you're not in a good mood surprise, all the time. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. It's, so. it's, it's weird these days because I remember when we were kids, I mean, it's. You know, if you wanted to meet a rock star, it was like a major ordeal, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, it was like you either had to know somebody. Like, like here's a perfect example. I mean, I had, there's this guy um, in my my hometown. He owned this, it was called The Record Store. That's what it was called, The Record Shop or The Record Store. And he had ends with, like, the concert promoters around, and he would always, you know, be able to get backstage or whatever. But the... But wait now, what was that? Jesus. My tummy's rumbling. Sorry. Uh, where's your Are you hungry again? Yeah, where's your girlfriend? <laughs> She's supposed to be Are you hungry me. again, Dave? I can't bother no. you. Oh my God, you a theremin in your stomach? Yeah, I got a theremin in my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> no, but but back then it was like you had to jump through hoops and there's no, I mean, because there was no social media back then. Yeah. No social media. If you wanted to, like, if you wanted to meet a rock star, if you wanted to, you never heard it. I mean, if you wanted to know about a rock star, it was like, you know. 16 magazine or, or circus magazine or right. Kerrang. It's all, that's all you had. Yep. 
And now it's a thing where, like, rock stars aren't rock stars anymore because, like, you know, Paul Staley goes on his head. He's like, you know, I had a bagel for breakfast this morning. He has a picture of it, you know? And it's right. like, it's too yeah. intimate. It's, it's too way intimate too now, intimate. you know? I don't know. And plus, and plus, rock stars aren't even dangerous anymore, man. That's just, no. You know, the danger's gone out of it. And that's one that's thing that I miss, true. man. You know, where's those Motley crews that are doing crazy shit, man? There's no more of those guys anymore. Well, and now it's almost frowned upon. I know. You know when you when you see a band doing that, I'm you're not like, gonna, yeah, I'm not going to say any names, but like when you see like a younger band doing that, and you can tell they're doing it on purpose, it seems fake, you know. Yeah. You know, like for some reason, it's I'm like, sure yeah, our parents feel completely different. But when Motley Crue was doing it, it seemed real. Yeah. Our parents were like, "Oh man, come on." Mm. Yeah, I was right. trying. I was trying to act We've like been Alice there. Cooper. That's yeah. right. <laughs> We've yeah. seen this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, I think the drug thing is. I'm not saying it's over, but it's like so frowned upon now that. You go backstage now, and it's like you know they got people got like Metallica. You go back for Metallica. There's like, there's like no booze, no beer. It's all little kids running around. Right. They got massage yeah. therapists and, right. and, and yeah. y- you know fucking yoga teachers back there and shit. And you know, well, and, I, and I think yeah, part of Brett that got to open up for Motley Crue years ago, and that that's the way it was. Our backstage area was pandemonium. Dudes drinking beer, you know, from from Texas. You know, right. And we go into their backstage room, and they're all sitting there, and they've got water bottles and a fruit tray, and right, and it's and like then they get up on stage and they're Motley Crue, but then they come back up. Stage did you did you see the 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 movie where um, I think it was the end with the Black Sabbath with Black Sabbath and they show Ozzy backstage riding a riding an exercise bike and they're all getting oh. ready and it's exactly that it's like complete mellow yeah like not probably the way it was in the seventies yeah, know. You know I mean? so. I think part of it is is the age of these folks. I mean, you know, they couldn't keep you look doing at it. Jimmy Page, and he's almost seventy, or if not seventy. I mean, oh yeah, they're all their seventy. I, I yeah. highly doubt that he's you know chugging down Jack Daniels and you know who knows what else back there. Oh, he's. I think he's pretty. I must say he's done, but I mean, he's. You know, he looks. I mean, he he looks old now. Yeah. You know, he went from like bl- it's like it's sort of like Keith Richards. One day you see him, he's like he's got black hair. Now he's like, well, fuck it. And he's it's just, just to- all yeah. white now. It's like, yeah. holy shit. He's, he's the only one who I think is actually still somewhat maintaining somewhat. Of oh, he still drinks and he smokes st- and all that stuff. Yeah. The, you know, of some, yeah, he's doing something. Whereas Mick Jagger is tip top. Yeah. And he's, he's healthier 70 now. something. And he's, <laughs> I, no, he's, the guy hasn't weighed over 100 pounds in his whole life. Right. <laughs> I was blown away when they came through. and So was he. He actually blew away. Yeah, he could have blown away. What, what show did you see? <laughs> was it was Zucker? when they? Yeah, I went. I, went, I was at yeah. that one too. That was awesome. There's like you know we actually uh, Brett and Bill and myself went up to Dallas to go see him. Hmm. Um, it's just I mean it's like one of those things that you know. How did y'all drag Bill to that? <laughs> Bill's the one who bought the <laughs> yeah, tickets. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Shit, man! Bill's yeah. the biggest Stone fan on the planet. Yeah. What are you talking about? Next to him. Oh, you a big Stones up. fan? No, no. <laughs> not at all. You don't like the Stones, really? No. Why? Oh, wow. He's, he's a not. Beatles fan. He and he's are you, like you are a Beatles, Beatles fan. I am the exclusive Beatles fan, which means as long as you're a Beatles fan, you cannot stand the Stones whatsoever. What? That's he comes from that school. That oh, that's one or the other. That yeah. school. Oh, there's no Stones here. That, that's so. The same which thing. is it? There's, is there's it Blur or or Oasis then? Oasis. Neither. I had to think for a second. Like, what's the other band? Blur. 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 Blur who? <laughs> Blur or Oasis. You know, there was that argument. They tried to redo that whole thing. Yeah, but, the, you know, like like the thing with the Stones is... Because those were the Stones. No, well, no, I'm just I'm talking about, like, you know, their show, their shows and stuff. I mean, that is just a machine. Yeah. And and mm-hmm. they can do that until one of them... Until Charlie... When Charlie Watts, like, finally says either he drops dead or he retires, that band will keep going. Once he goes, that's it. That's it. But that's what they always say. Like, when Charlie's in it, we're gonna do it. If Charlie's th- not in it, then it's then it's Keith doing his thing. And well, Mick I mean, you gotta thing. realize. I mean, they gotta. I mean, how old is he now? I mean, uh, Charlie Watts got to be seventy five. Yeah, he's up there. Bill Wyman's like in his eighties now. Yeah, and he's not playing with him anymore. But, yeah. but he's fucking eighty years old. I mean, he's probably got like a twenty two year old girlfriend. Yep. No, he's got like yeah, he's got like wife like thirty or fourteen. Is that what you're <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fourteen and a half. Right. Yeah. Get it right. Yeah, but that's Just like that Al- the Alabama. Governor, right? Oh, yeah. Alabama governor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even like someone like Alice Cooper. Here's another one. Right. I mean, that guy is still going strong. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, if, if I, you look at his, band, he talks about it. He's like, man, got to take it easy these days. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's but it's hard because I mean, you know, you want you want these bands to keep going and 
touring and making records and whatnot. Yeah. But then at the same time, are they tarnishing their legacy? Are they, you know, <laughs> that's, I mean, that was Robert Plant's part of his, his whole thing. With and that. I would totally agree with that. See, you know, that was, that was it, one it, of my If points. you can sit there and think to yourself, we're going to go out there and make ourselves look ridiculous where we, where we look awesome now and we don't really need the money. So whatever, you know, don't be motivated to go out and do it at the expense of your reputation. Yeah, see, I've been, I, uh, you know, and I've, I've talked however, to you, I would love you about to say this that before. I mean, I've been a huge Beatles fan all my life. I've got that, you know, growing up. And from that, I naturally, I went, <laughs> again, they're going to come to Stones back to me. I went the Paul route versus the John route, right? It's all into the Paul. And yes, as much as I've always wanted to see that dude live, I'm at the point where, like, stop making concerts. You don't need it. Your voice no longer does what it should do, but you you still trying for it. And I'm getting to the point where I am such a perfectionist when it comes down to music. I want to hear the way it's supposed to be. Not like, okay, I'm, I went to see him, but he didn't make any of the high notes. That he, you know, he, he's screwing it up. Mm. I'd much rather you not do that at all. Man, you know what? I don't remember him doing badly. I heard it was he, great. He came through a couple years back and... Bless his heart, a buddy of mine's like, "What are you doing right now?" I couldn't, didn't have the money to go. He's like, uh, "What are you doing right now? How quick can you be at the what, what's this Coliseum called? Frank Irwin Center? Irwin Center. <laughs> yeah. Irwin Center. It, I go ten minutes. I got there and he had fourteenth row, which meant that when he came out and did his acoustic stuff, I could look right up his nostrils. Oh wow! And he was great. His band was good. It, it was good. totally worth band. it. Well, that's just totally it. I mean, it. The musicality. Yeah. It's also there, but yeah. but there's times that I've seen him now live and whatever that just. His vocal range is diminished. He can no yeah. longer hit what he used to hit. But he doesn't necessarily change his entire style to work with that. Like the way Robert Plant did for the, for the yeah, celebration. Yeah, he'll, he'll just drop it down or whatever or just fuck it up altogether. Yeah, they're down like a whole step for this whole yeah. concert, yeah. Which I thought they were great. Yeah, yeah. I thought that, but I, I mean, that's they what, that, that's that. what we're talking I mean, about. I, I I'm much rather you stop playing, we'll leave it at I, where I'm you was. I'm trying to remember we'll hearing... And I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I could have just been... You know, in mental bliss, but it, I I just don't but remember which hearing is part Paul of that's that's part thing. of going to a concert too. If you're yeah. in a concert, everything sounds great, and you listen to the same concert back on YouTube, and you're like, "What the heck was he thinking?" Yeah, yeah. I remember really liking Van Halen when I saw him last time, and then <laughs> I I was on this kick, which I should still be on. That I'm like, "Man, I'm gonna go deaf soon." So halfway through the concert, <laughs> that I was like, me the other night. I went and grabbed my earplugs and stuck them in. Yeah, and all of a sudden, I could hear some things happening. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> man. There's not a good singer on the stage at all. Yeah. Like, the backups were awful. The, I mean, the show had great energy and was just like, and Eddie was awesome as can be. I heard the band was awesome. I think that's all yeah. it really is. I mean, you're paying just still for the experience. You know, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be exactly what you want anymore. You know the songs. Right. You just wanted to see him up there with the whole thing. Me, on the other hand, I want to hear it correctly. That's why it's so hard for me to watch yeah. that. Well, that could almost go for anybody, though. I mean, just... You know, it's it's you, you can go see anybody on a bad night. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. That was the thing because I made the mistake. Is Van Halen's one of my bands? I made the mistake of going watching it like their opening night on YouTube, and I heard Dave, and I'm like going, I don't know if I want to go see that. You know yeah. what I mean? And I just I didn't go. I just said, you know, fuck it. I, I saw him. Okay, I saw him in eighty one, eighty two, eighty three, eighty four. I saw him in peak. those years. Though, and nothing ever. I don't. I don't care if he sprouts wings and flies around the stage. He's never going to beat those shows. No. You know, that's that's like that's Oakland, the Oakland 81. I think it was 81, right? I saw them. The first time I saw them was. Man, I'm going to say either. I think it was Women and Children First or Fair Warning. Oh, wow. Might have been right in the middle. And then, of course, the 1984 tours and all that stuff. You know? Right. Um, but you're never going to. Never going to top that shit. And now yeah. it's just more of a thing where. I don't know if they got bored and wanted to go out and just tour with Dave for a little bit. I don't know. They put another, you know. I wish I, I as, like that as album. As the album, oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. The yeah, album's that great. Was actually, good. Yeah. The live one, eh. Yeah. You know the Tokyo thing, but yeah, yeah the actually the you know the the what was the name of that thing? Something about the. It's got a big choo choo train on the front. Yeah, Di- different, the different truth, <laughs> a or different, different kind of truth, different kind of yeah, truth. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of those songs <laughs> were like demos from like back in the early days. Yeah. And I think Wolfgang went through actually a whole box of stuff and said, you know what, we tried doing some of these, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that y- as much as we want to sit there and go, why is that guy up there doing that? We want Michael Anthony back, which we do. But uh, from what I understand, the the coolness of their set list on their last is tour all him. 
it was him going, we need to play these songs. Yeah. Right. Songs that y'all haven't touched in He's the one who wrote all, yeah, he writes all the song lists for him. Yeah. Maybe that's what he should do, and then Michael Anthony should actually write. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he'd probably agree with us. Yeah, he'd probably be like, "Hey, this is cool that I did that," but because I, I mean, that's the one thing that was really missing for me mm-hmm. is is Michael Anthony's backing vocals to me are part of that Van Halen sound. Yeah, just oh, as of much course. As, yeah, it's just as Eddie's guitar thing, yeah. and as much as the drum sound of the, you know. Well, I'm just waiting for for Wolfgang to to finally bust out on his own because he's doing a solo record right now, but he's playing with Tremonti. Yeah, and that band is a man a bunch of killers. I don't know if you ever heard of those records, mm-hmm. but whoo, man, the Tremonti stuff is really good. You know mm-hmm. that is right, Tremonti. <laughs> Look okay. at no. Remember the band Creed? I think one song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about what about Alter Bridge? Remember Alter Bridge? No. Okay, it's like okay. Well, I'm, I'm pretty much going to lean back. I'm out of this. Uh, are you really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what, what bands? Well, what, so yeah. You, what are you listening to you these gonna days? Find, yeah, what so you, you like the Beatles, right? Yeah. Is that your band? That, that, yeah, it was pretty much my bangle. You like anything else besides the Beatles, or no? It's it. That's really? not <laughs> no. <laughs> that work, man. It's no, cool. I, I I truly listen to a lot, but I'm I've never really gotten into a certain thing where I'm like totally after another band. I've never really gotten into another band. Tadashi. Um, so when you were a kid, were you a rocker? Were like did no, you never went um, through a which is why metal phase. No, which is why I'm. Yeah. After the Paul train, I am definitely more the mellow songs and the minor yeah. keys. That's my that's my jam and minor shit. Right, yeah. but uh, um. Yeah, I think it's also different. Like, you know, I, I grew up in Germany, so I listened to some of the other stuff that actually never made over here. I've heard British bands that just didn't make it. Right, right. And I, and I got into other stuff that I liked. Um, there's now one metal band I give you that I that I was getting into is called Advance. Advance? Yeah. And uh, so there was this the guy on guitar, I guess, and he was already doing it. He, he pulled in, he pulled in at the time, three guys from a pretty like a regional cover band from the area where we so we saw these guys at this cover band. It was one of the cover bands we would look up to or we're like, that's what we want to be, right? Uh-huh. Spider. And so he pulled a singer in Oliver Hotman, which fantastic vocals. They brought the keyboard player in and the, the drummer and the bass player at the time. So he pretty much brought the band over. And uh by now I think none of them but the guitarists are still in there. They they're all pretty much intermingled change. But that album that I heard it was uh it doesn't matter, it's something hard. Um it was a great album, and what I liked, and again, it, it dates my other shit, right? So they 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 have a cover on their ABBA SOS in metal version, and then they do <laughs> Fly the Bumblebee. It's just fantastic. Yeah, that sounds oh, familiar. So I remember some that band. band. I showed you that. You showed uh. me that band. I remember that. So I I mean it's it's pretty it's pretty much versed. I just I've never gotten into that kind of yeah. stuff. I just I couldn't stand the Stones. I just yeah, we already mentioned that we don't we so don't need to look don't like, like the Stones. <laughs> no. Jesus. Again, oh, like play, like one, one of the songs that I've actually liked was one of the later ones where he was like, it was that uh, Anybody See, my, See baby. my Baby. That one I liked. And like, that's a strong vocal. Like we that. we, well, we I play. I turn you on to the band Jellyfish. Jelly who? Oh, there you go. Jellyfish, I think nope. you would love them. I'm more, I'm more of a, a 70 poppy stone kind of guy. Now poppy, listen to Sticks. Poppy. That's get me right there. From <laughs> all the stuff that makes 68. All the Mick stuff Taylor. That Mick Taylor did. That's the stuff that I like. Mick who? Like, like what three three se- three albums he did? No, he's got. Uh, he was on Let It Bleed. He was on Let It Bleed. He was. Uh, that's where he made his debut. He was on Let It Bleed. He was on two songs on Let It Bleed. Oh, okay. Well, two songs. Okay. And then and then uh, Sticky Fingers and then Exile Goat's Head and then It's Only Rock and Roll and I think that was it. I think they were about to start recording Black and Blue. Yeah, because Ron Woods on am Black I, and Blue. Am I correct that he's back with them? He so what? Like, no <laughs> tours with them or something. He so. he was touring with them, playing like two or three songs with them. He'd play like Midnight Rambler and Can't You Hear Me Knocking, yeah. and then I mean, so he's hanging w- around. Like, he was sort of like it was kind of like a. I mean, I don't want to. They basically wheel him out because they knew that still hardcore Stones fans wanted him back because that's their best years. I mean, th- that's yeah. where they were the most musical, the most improvisational. And he's great. He's yeah. that, uh, that's insanely great. Yeah. And you know the reason why he left, right? Because he d- wasn't getting songwriting credit. Well, part of it was they were all a bunch of dope addicts, and he was into dope, too. Oh, yeah. And he s- was like, if I stay, I'm going to die. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, could you imagine? And, you know, and it's, could you imagine, like, being in a band that huge and then just leaving? And then you're playing. I mean, I saw him. He was playing with Zona Rosa or something down here one time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, man, you kept still being the goddamn Stones, bro. Right. You know? Hmm. He no, no offense to Ron Wood. I mean, I love Ron Wood, too, but I was. Eh. 
Ron Wood's kind of like. Good God, you make fun of Ron Wood now. Ron Wood's <laughs> like, look, you make fun Ron, of Ron Wood. Ron Wood to me is he's like, like God, he's like the Bruce Kulick of like, the Rolling Stones. <laughs> he's like Diet Coke. Ron Wood is Diet Coke to me. He's which one of the band? He's the guitar player. The okay. other guitar player. Yeah. He, he, he looks like he's not Keith Richards. Richards. He's like a dark-haired Rod Stewart. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> who it is. Yeah. Watts is a drummer. Yeah, yeah, Charlie, yeah, I don't even know. Oh we'll get there. God. We'll get you there. We'll get you there, don't brother. Worry. There's Leatherface on guitar. I know that. Leather Ooh, face. Leatherface. Come on. Hey, Leatherface. <laughs> Damn. Why did the other Leatherface sing, right? <laughs> Jeez. Guy's a stand up comedian over here. Right. Can bring him over to Cap City, drop him off. I want to see a picture of Keith Richards with a big chainsaw. You know? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. We, we actually occasionally play in this other little thing that we're slowly starting to put together. And mm. part of it, it's it's basically a lot of. Of like late '60s and early '70s stuff, you know, like Delaney and Bonnie and and Leon Russell and Jesus. stuff like that. And um, one of the two, no, two of the songs that are on the list are so "Can't You Hear Me Knocking" <sighs> and "Loving Cup." I'll, I'll give you <laughs> "Loving Cup." I can play. Take the other it's one the off. How about like "Start Me Up"? You know, I think that, that's a good one. "Start we Me Up." You know, start is me that up. Is that the one we played with Miles? <laughs> no. Which one am I thinking? Under well, cover I of the night. How about that one? No, that's Miss <laughs> oh You. You're thinking oh, of Miss, miss you. you. I think Miss You. Oh, that's a great tune, man. Do you know Start Me Up actually started off as a reggae tune? I think, uh, no, I didn't know that. That's I probably do, though. I don't really think about started it. Started off. I mean, you could tell. I could totally hear it. You know, with Keith playing the. Did you know what I pulled out of the closet the other day? Hmm. Besides my sexuality. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, emotional rescue. That's a good. Record. I had the disc. And I'm like, holy shit! I got this disc, I, and great. It's like it's like their disco album, right? Sort of. There's a lot of great tunes on that album, though. My friend swears of. by that album. Really? He thinks, it's a, he thinks it's like the best album ever. Yeah. I, I I'm I wouldn't say that. It's good, you know, for the time. If you're, you know, blowing lines and dancing at Studio 54. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Blowing <laughs> lines. <laughs> hey, Dave. When's the last time you blew a line, Dave? <laughs> 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 you blow a line. Right. Billy looks like that kind of guy who blows lines all the time. Yeah, you know? yeah if, I, if I bail on Moby Dick, it'll be because of the drug problem. Because the drug problems <laughs> yeah, right. stuff. Big drug problems <laughs> yeah. in our band. Yeah. No, but, uh, you know, that, and that's Lots another thing. Advil. And yeah. So, <laughs> hey, so that's another thing. When did the Stones come off the rails? Tattoo you, I think, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Whatever happened all the bit. As soon as it hit like 80, 81, it turned into this kind of. Because. I'm a big Nobody Rod Stewart. I'm a big Rod Stewart fan, right? Love fucking old Rod Stewart. 70s Rod Stewart. Mm hmm. Soon as it Gasoline hit, Alley and yeah. Soon as it hit, like, there's an album called "Blondes Have More Fun." The Do You mm -hmm. Think I'm Sexy and all that shit. Mm -hmm. That was a great record. The next one, you got all these these Casio keyboards in it and shit. I'm like, oh, gotta tap out. Yep. It's like, you know, time's up, brother. And I was like, oh, it, it it happened like right around eighty one ish. All the bands started doing the you know the Hall and Oates skinny ties and all right. that shit and you know and the and the Casio keyboards and yeah, right. the drum you know the I think even Robert Plant was wearing a skinny tie by that time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's like uh, they should just like take that whole era of music and just, just fucking destroy it, man. There's so many so many great bands put out a lot of shitty records. Yeah. You know, because they wanted to cash in on that, that MTV video yep. Yep. fame stuff, you know? That's when image became more important, way more important than, than the music. Yeah, well, because it was MTV. That's why right. you had to make these, these I bet promos. You, I still don't know what y'all talking about, but there's probably the songs of the bands that I would like then, right? Probably. <laughs> you like Hall & Oates? So, that's another one. I did used to not. No. I was not a Hall & Oates fan. Okay. Um, they huge. great stuff. Fucking I'm huge. still not a fan. Now, there were songs Smash. I've always liked. Yeah. <laughs> But then there were certain. I played you make my dreams come true the <laughs> other night of the gig. But then there were certain things that came along, songs I liked, yep. and then, like I said, I mean, one of the first things that I came back into when I started looking back in the bands was it was a project with Yacht Rock, and you mm -hmm. can't do Yacht Rock without having Hall and Oates in it. Which I'm still I'm telling him every time we get together, we gotta do Yacht Rock. There is money in You're the Yacht Rock band. Oh. <laughs> you you got to do uh, the wedding and corporate gigs. That's what a cheddar is, right? But uh, he doesn't want to. He, he says he'll die playing these songs. I mean, I'm good with that. As long as you don't <laughs> You're give me okay stones. with me dying? No, so these songs, exactly, you idiot. What exactly is Yacht Rock? So Yacht Rock is, to me, it's... it's Jimmy Buffett. Okay. No, it's no, not Jimmy no, Buffett. No, not but Jimmy they, Buffett. It's actually a thing. It's, there's a band like, out of Atlanta. Well, the, the reason why I'm asking is there's a friend of mine. His name is jo Jonas, Jonas Lawrence. He um, he's a guitar was a guitar player in uh, American Gypsy Band. Okay. He's got a Yacht Rock thing going. 
Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's no, they call it Trop Rock. Is it Trop Rock? No, this is yeah. There's a band out of uh, Atlanta actually called Yacht Rock Review, and I'm okay, they, they're all about. So you can look them up, but it's it's pretty, it's all that kind of stuff, you know. So what would be you, in your playlist, Steve? Hold on, if we you, were going you to play do this. like those the, the seventy those songs that and the other guys in the audience with the skipper hat and whatever. Yeah, it's like the Holland Oates, the Doobie Brothers, Captain and Tennille. Yes, exactly <laughs> that kind of stuff. That's in there. Whatever happened to them? And uh, Dave, look it up. They, they, <laughs> no. they pay for that. <laughs> Jesus. Because it takes them back. It's like their old days. It's their prom days. They well, they have. I know that. Jimmy Buffett has what they call the parrot heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, he's not part of that. That's yeah, all, he wouldn't. So he wouldn't fit into that. So either. yacht rock is not. Yacht part rock of the is heads. like is okay. is like it's the seventy you have to smooth wear like rock, right? Seventy pastels smooth rock. and right pastels. No, Would Steely Dan pastel. be part of that? Yes. Okay. You I, totally but lost. only you only have late the open Steely Dan. the open shirt like reeling in the ears, the hair coming out. Oh, reeling in the ears. Tom Jones. I could totally do that. Yeah. See, I yeah, like I just <laughs> got to get him to actually, do it. I actually found a hair on my chest the other day. <laughs> Congratulations! Just one, just one hanging down. I pulled it out though. <laughs> <laughs> it was very dark black. It wasn't matching the rest of my my sheen Your complexion motif. on the front. Your motif. So I'm, the, I'm the hairless. Do not go. I'm like the hair. I have like <laughs> z- I'm like the. I got good hair on top, but I'm just rest of me is just bald, <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> right, Dave. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Right, are we at the end of our concert here? No, I don't know. We're still, are, are people leaving? Nah. I don't know. For them tickets, they probably stayed all night. That's right. You know, oh, the people at home don't realize that I'm sitting here staring at a yeah, Led we Zeppelin got Led Zeppelin concert. Zeppelin. Yeah, we're, watching a, we're actually going to have a Led Zeppelin show on, on the TV. It's in, actually in studio, Celebration so. Day. Celebration Day. Because yeah. they were celebrating that Led That's Zeppelin was back them. together. Yes. Like I know. So, hey, since, you, since you're playing Led Zeppelin, are, are you listening to any Led Zeppelin at all? Or no? So, no. Um, <laughs> None at all? And I shouldn't say this on the record. I will I will listen to them while while rehearsing and practicing. But I, I told Billy I still to this day I don't just throw them in the <laughs> CD player or whatever USB stick just to listen to them. Yeah. I love playing the stuff. When the band is fantastic, I enjoy every bit of it. But you're not. But I do not listen not to a fan, it. Not fan, really. It's it's not necessarily just a fan. It's it's just it's not my thing. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I probably won't turn away if it comes out on the radio station, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But. Um, I will not throw a whole CD in there and just so listen to funny. that thing like he does. I love playing it, but yeah, I'll listen to the live stuff on the way here. Yeah. My fr- my my friend uh, and I we used to go to the record store and we'll buy like obscure versions of stuff. You know, before they released all the vault stuff, yeah. the, the deluxe boxes and stuff like that. You know, I've got like a, I think it's like a seventy eight size or something of of like when they were with the Bangladesh Orchestra <laughs> and doing outtakes of Friends and. Yeah, and four sticks and stuff, and I mean that was that was me, but that's so that's just funny that you don't even know. I didn't know you were such a Zep, a big Zep guy. But you're a Rush fan. I'm a drummer. I mean that's that's you know Kiss I got me into fan. playing drums. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something right now. And just because gonna, the bass, no, you're probably gonna jump over the no, table just, and try I to kill me. But after watching this, I think Jason's a better drummer than his dad ever was. You're on drugs. Ooh. No, I'm not. Here's why. Watch this you would, shit. You would, Jason's great. <laughs> but, phenomenal. But there's if you watch if if and and Jason is absolutely talented. But if you watch like Royal Albert Hall on the How the West Was Won, uh-huh. and then you watch this compare comparatively, I mean, there's you first of all, you wouldn't have Jason's even let's say Jason played drums. You wouldn't have how he plays without John. Oh yeah, I I I get all that. And, I understand all that. But what I'm saying is, on the flip side, if you watch this, I mean, he is man, he is so smooth and just like just so on the money on this, and it was just but that's the issue. That's what you See, didn't like. Yeah. That's what I don't like. Oh, you like I if you listen, John has has a swing, much yeah, like yeah. how Bill Ward has a swing. Um, did you see? Did you see the uh, Ginger Baker? Documentary. documentary. I think I, or at least I <laughs> he's caught a loon. part of it. <laughs> he's, he's a total loon. Total yeah. crazy. Yeah. He was saying because he's actually a jazz drummer. He was right. a jazz drummer, right? Well, all those guys were early on. Right, right. So the guy interviewing him asked him, "Well, what did you think about John Bonham?" Oh, and, he, and he goes, "John Bonham couldn't swing a sack of shit." <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because it, you know, it's it's two different worlds. I mean, Ginger Baker is just a nut job. Anyway, he's a great drummer, but he's a nut job. Yeah. Well, I, after watching this, I was like, "Holy shit, this guy's good!" I, and I, yeah. you know, the I thing, couldn't believe how good he was. The thing or that's is, telling me. for me is that it took Jason a double bass pedal to do what his dad did with one foot. Mm. 
And to me, that is the 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 calling card uh, that his to me that that his dad is better than his son. Um, his son knows the parts and, and he's nailed it without a doubt. I don't think they really could have gotten another drummer to do it. I mean, Dave Grohl, maybe. Oh, Jesus but I think Christ. I don't I think Dave Grohl. <laughs> I think Dave Grohl would be probably just as comparable as Jason when it comes to that. I but I don't think that uh I don't think there's anybody really I mean the my my ranking is would in terms of drummers is is Buddy Rich um and then you would from there it's kind of a tree. It's sort of like John Bonham and Neil Peart. Neil Peart for the technicality, the the uh the the uh Using of his rudiments, if you will, yeah, yeah, and John for feel, while well, he also used and drugs. No, he wasn't a big drug the user. Alcohol, it's the same difference. Oh, brother, <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah, but I, I wish they would just have like a cam, just like like a drum cam for the whole show, just for him, because then you could see that. I understand everybody's talking about you know he's got a double bass pedal and all that stuff, but how much is he using it? You know what I mean? Is he using it on all? He the used it on the entire song of of. Uh, good times, bad times. Did he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Even Ru- in fact, during the during the show, Robert Plant makes a point. To oh yeah, I, I remember. That. Yeah, I remember that part of it. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, he's very fluid with it. And and you mentioned a cam. He actually uh, on his personal Facebook or whatever. He actually has that. Oh, does he really? So, yeah, for that he, show. Not for that. I don't know about that show, but for, he you know he does his Led Zeppelin tribute thing. Yeah, and the so Led Zeppelin experience, experience, whatever. Exactly. It is. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, but yeah, he 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 uh, has a cam there where he'll show you know things that he's doing and playing and whatnot. And yeah, I remember like when I first bought this, I watched. It, I was just totally like just blown away about how good he was because you know it's just I've seen his other bands that he's had, you know. You know, Bonham, Bonham and, and he had it was the Air Race, I think he was in for a little bit, and then he was in um he played Foreigner. He played Foreigner too, yeah. yeah. Foreigner and he plays with Sammy Hagar and Yeah, the circle. All those guys, yeah. Yeah, he was definitely great. I mean, he you know, he nailed the parts and has the feel and and uh the I think the biggest factor for them for this particular show, unlike the like the fortieth anniversary of Atlantic Records where they put it together last minute. They rehearsed for like six weeks for this. Yeah. Well, didn't Phil Collins play on that other one? That was on the the uh, the Atlantic thing. The li- no, the live the Live Aid thing. So they had the Live Aid was with Phil Collins and Tony Thompson playing drums together. Yeah, but who did who did the 40th anniversary one? Jason did. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jason. Oh, I know they they rehearsed for you know it was a good long time for this one. I know yeah, that, and you can tell. You oh can yeah, totally tell. Well, that's what they were saying because when they did Live Aid, it was a it was such a like a, a mess. Uh, it was such a mess. They're like, oh, we can't go out and do that again. Guitar it was, was out of tune. It was all over the place. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was. And I think I don't was. Was John Paul Jones part of it? I don't remember yeah. seeing him. part. No, okay. he was out there. He was out there. He they didn't bring him for in for no quarter, which I thought was really weird. Well, it's his tune. Sort of. Uh, yeah. I just uh, like. Well, I mean, I'm talking about when they did the page and plant thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. understand why they just didn't bring yeah, him back then. Him. Did I see them on some kind of uh, award ceremony where he's like, "Hey, did you guys forget my number or something?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's making a comment like that. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't understand why they didn't do that. Like I, I get on the one hand where they were trying to keep it like, it's not Led Zeppelin. It's not it's Led Zeppelin. Zeppelin. That's the just whole thing. That's why they could call it, you know, Plant and Page because if he was involved, it would be like, okay, you know, the it's whole Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin machine would start moving again, and I don't right. think they want to get into that. Well, and Robert Plant, I think, is the one who's most does not want to get into that, and that. I don't know. That's that's Robert's um, spirit of independence and wanting to move beyond uh, Led Zeppelin and, and to do things that are well, different. The interview that I heard with him is because the question comes up like once a year, once every you know year and a half about mm-hmm. Zeppelin getting back together. And he always says, we did the thing in 2007 and it was fantastic. He goes, but to capture that moment in time every night on tour is not going to happen because you know physically they're all not i mean jason's still in good shape but the rest of them are just you know yeah you know i mean you're not well, going mean, to be able to do this four or five nights a week no. it's not going to happen no without a doubt yeah so and that's I mean, why even they jason w- even jason i mean i 
He, I know a while back he had some problems with his hands. Yeah. And and I, I actually was having problems with my hands. It fucking at one sucks point. getting old, doesn't it? Dude, it's terrible. Shit, every time I get up now, I fucking something pops or cracks or squeaks or I mean, honestly, dude, every time. Yeah. What are y'all talking about? Yeah, he's about he's a young old. buck. <laughs> How old are you? You have to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that old. I have to think about. It. No, it's 37. 37. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you have to, you know, and I, it like for me, it's been like the past couple of years. I mean, I'm physically, I'm still pretty good. But I mean, it's just it's like pops and you know, arthritis in the hands and just oh, all yeah. sorts of crazy shit. Going I was on. I was getting like swelling in my fingers and and that's the worst you, for a drummer. You too, play you, know? you play you know I hit pretty hard I guess. <laughs> he guesses. And, um, you hit like a girl. <laughs> No, not yeah, this guy. <laughs> He's loud. So I actually, I actually, a big girl. I messaged him. <laughs> <laughs> like a big girl. <laughs> Very big. Girl. A real big girl. No, that one I get. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just messing with you. Go ahead. I'm, I messaged Jason because I wanted to know what he did to help his hands. Because my hands, I mean, they, I was getting tingling. Yeah. The whole deal, right? And, you know, he gave me some tips and stuff. He messaged you back? Nice. Yeah, he did. Yeah, really? he looked yeah. for the Lotus and the license plate. Right. And oh. wrote him. <laughs> Cream dog. Right. And, um, and then after that, I found some sticks that 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 I still use now. They're they're z- they're made by Zildjian, and uh, they're these anti vibe things where they hollow out the in the back of the the stick, and they stick like the shock absorber rubber thing inside Jesus the stick. Christ! <laughs> and <laughs> really, it really re- it feels wow. it feels like you're playing. Number one, the stick is lighter, which huh. which is great because I was using practically marching sticks for. A lump, or at least that's probably part of it. So, when I played marching, I played in marching band. I know when you use it for a kit, because I did the same thing for a lot of years. Yeah, and uh, I used to use these these sticks. This is for drummers out there. Um, they're the Bobby Rock model by Promark, Mm -hmm. like I think it was 444s, but these things were like tree trunk, like like billy bats, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I had them for I played them forever. I don't know why I played such big sticks, I was such a skinny guy, I had these huge sticks. And I had a pair of those, uh, you know, the ahead ones. The the, the I the actually got a pair of them down there. Right. Um, Which I, I broke I ha- those too. And I had them in my bag, and I had like two pairs of like Tommy Lee concerts. I just had them in there for some reason. I was going to switch to those, and so I ran when I was playing a gig down a Sixth Street, and I busted a stick, and I'm like, shit, I got nothing. I look back, and I just pulled those out. I'm like, holy shit, these things are like you know half as light, mm-hmm. and it was like. Pfft, from that day on, I, I use those. Yeah, you know, yeah. I tell you, you swinging baseball bats for there's no there's no reason to do that. Right. People and, think and you I know, was well, I was breaking sticks. That's the thing. Yeah. I, I kept having to go up and up and up. Right. Because I kept breaking, and I was still breaking those sticks. I was still bre- I was breaking marching sticks, and so, and I still break a lot of sticks now. I mean, I usually break one to two sticks at rehearsal, but but. The difference. See, oh, there was this double bass pedal right there. Um, <laughs> the difference is that that catches my eye too. Um, the difference is is that that my hands don't hurt nearly as much at the end of playing for three hours. You know, I mean, we did a gig where it was three hours and forty five minutes straight, yeah. and that's a lot of drumming to oh yeah it to, is yeah. to do and and um, especially when it's all Zeppelin. You know, it's not like you're playing Karen Carpenter and yeah. You know, so hey, what's hey, wrong, Karen Carpenter? I love the Carpenters. Are you Jesse, kidding me? Jesse's girl doesn't worry out quite as bad as Led Zeppelin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse's girl. When are they yeah. ever going to put that song to sleep? Jesus. Oh man, I'll be out of a job. Hey, could you imagine? Like, <laughs> it, it, hey, could you imagine if Rick Springfield probably got paid like a nickel every time a band played that song anywhere in the world? Well, it, <laughs> it'd, it'd be incredibly yeah. wealthy. Yeah. Let's not and let's not ac- encourage that either. Because yeah, right, yeah. could you imagine that though? Every time. Well, there's there's some people who 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 think that cover bands should be paying or venues should be paying. Yeah, you know, well, every time that, that a cover band plays, there any you know. Isn't well, there actually some? They don't. They, they, they do. don't hear. They do. And it's what Has I cap and BMI. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Germany is so the same thing. Gima has you. So, um, how's that go the, again? The Gima, shut up. So the bash you, <laughs> an idiot. So the venue actually has a submitted playlist of what they played, and you pay for the songs. It's insane. So well, do they do they do that in Austin too or no? Just. When you're a venue, you have to pay ASCAP BMI fees, and they put the little sticker on your window and stuff. Mm-hmm. So how does that work? I mean, do you know how it works? Or? They collect the money from the venues, and then somehow they, some 
magical cloud in the sky decides that this guy gets money and this guy doesn't or whatever. So it's like a flat it, it, fee, it's, though. It's a flat fee. Yeah. Uh, so basically, it, the artist yeah. share in the well, supposedly, because exactly. it's, it's so being it's, divided it, up between. I'm sure it's being divided up between the record company, the publisher, and then the artist right. gets the little. Well, whoever, crumb whoever gets on publishing the on, the, on the music, whoever right. gets published. That's on the music. crazy, man. It's just it's come to that point where it's been like that for a while. I play. Uh, uh, Broken Teeth played a venue that we show up and on the stage there's a sign, no cover tunes. Because they don't pay into ASCAP or BMI. Yeah. And they had a jukebox, and the jukebox was nothing but local bands. I want to say it was somewhere in... Well, that's cool, though. Yeah. That, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Huh. I wonder what they're paying for. That does. I, that's a, no wonder why like, bands aren't getting paid around town. Like, a lot of bands, you know, mm. or the, the rates have gone way down, maybe because it's because of stuff like that, you know? Well, it's partly that, I'm sure, and it's also partly that there's so many bands. I mean, you know, you play out in Los Angeles, and I'm sure you've done that, and... If you're a local band in Los Angeles, you, it's rare that you'll find a place that you won't have to actually like buy tickets yeah. and to play there. I mean, I remember my my bands in the early when I was younger and in the and early when you were younger. In the early when I was younger, that's right. That'll work. Um, you know, we bought we had to buy like a hundred tickets or two hundred tickets, and then we'd sell those, and then we'd come back and say we want more tickets. And they're like, yeah, sure you do. And we'd sell those. Well, that's how the pay-to-play thing works in Austin, too, right? Because, I mean... Well, I remember it being like this in the 90s where, like, you would have, like, tickets that you would hand out to people. And then when they... So, hey, come to our show. Come to our show. Yeah, when they w- you're, like, literally standing on the street and somebody's like, thanks for it's nothing. almost like flyers. Throwing it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Behind their back. But then when you did your show... When they walk through the door, you give the ticket that you got to see the band that this guy badgered me to come see these guys play, and you'd get like a dollar. Yeah, you get a dollar so per person. The night they'd go, all right, you guys get thirty five dollars. Right, right. Yeah, but you drank a hundred, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bob's you country actually bunker. owe us. Yeah. Right. You owe me a lot of money for that. How do you drink? I don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All I right. said no. I woke up and said no one yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I remember that back, you know, back in the day, it was you would get tickets. I think you like you, you either wrote your band name on the back or something, and that's how you would get your money. I I, I know the back room used to do that. I back remember, room was you know big like that. Me and Taz and Kelly, we had our old, old band, Psycho Magnets. And yeah, we'd print up a whole page of tickets and cut them up. Me and Kelly would be sitting in his living room. Like you make up. your own tickets? Yeah, we'd make our own tickets. That's what that's what we did too. Yeah. Like my my and old band, have Sky a stack Lab, of them and did that. And, you know, hey, you guys don't have real jobs. We have real jobs. So you two guys go out on 6th Street and stand there and hand out on the street corner right. in front of babes trying to right. get, trying to beg people to come to our shows. Yep. Or, you know, you go to, like, you, to the and back we, room we, or, and you're, like, underneath the, underneath the uh, what do you call it, the wiper blades on the cars. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. I yep. would come out from, I would come out after shows at the back room. Sneakers, and sneakers have like the back room. Yeah. Just have the <laughs> like, whole yeah. thing would be covered with like 10 different fucking bands on here. Yeah. Like, fuck, just tossing them all off, you know. Oh, this is a good, I'll, I'll keep this one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I was one of those guys that did that, so I can't, you know. Right. And you always be like very careful with the alarms. You kind of have to kind of, you know. Yeah. yeah. You, see, you see a little red dot. And, and it was really funny because back then there was cars this is you talk about like twenty years ago. The cars, uh, people had cars that didn't have alarms, but they would get a little red light. Right, it was right, a right. fake red light that you could, to, yep, to make it believe that they had an alarm, which is kind of crazy. I never knew that. It's like why go out and spend money on that when you can actually just go out and buy an buy alarm, alarm, you know? So you always have to be very careful you how know, you put it in there. Just even in the last few years, when uh, uh, what was it, Red Eye Fly? You'd walk into Red Eye Fly uh-huh. and pay to get into the back area where the bands play. And there would be somebody asking you, "Who are you here to see?" And they got a little drawn the little, little line. tally sheet. Yeah. Oh, that's not. But that's not really too legit, is it? And then at the end of the night, they're like, "Okay." Blah, blah, blah. Oh wow, Jesus! But you then said, I said no. It would just be nice if they just you know <laughs> paid the bands a flat fee instead of you know that. That's when I said yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, flat that's fees are always good. Yeah, flat fee plus percentage of the bar is better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because yeah. I remember. I mean, my. My first gig I had, or the first band I had in the States was a blues band back in 04, 03, 04. And uh, we played Six Street. We played Joe's Generic before that closed. And we played that Monday nights. Okay, Monday, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Because that's when people are out and about. Oh, yeah. And we would play for three bucks and tips each for four hours. (laughs) 
It's just you can't do that. It sounds like the lucky lounge. Like they said, right? Well, you you know, it's for exposure. No people die of exposure. Give me money. <laughs> well, I remember w- it was kind of <laughs> cool. We played, and you remember this? We played Babes because it, uh, it was a hamburger joint on one side, mm. and then it was a rock. Or I guess a rock yeah. bar on the other. I guess you would call it. And part of your deal was you would get a free a free meal. Remember, like mm-hmm. free hamburger, fries, and a coke, whatever. Yeah. So we would always go down like the next day. Like the band would go down, or we whenever we just go down and get our, you know, because back then, I mean, shit, we're like in our early twenties. I mean, a, f- a free hamburger and fries was, was a big your, deal. That was your <laughs> meal for the. Yeah. For that, the was a, that was a big fucking deal right. back that then. That works man. for me. Yeah. <laughs> good times, man. Good so, times. So I used to play at um, right across the street from Rifle. What was that place called? Uh, it was Ocean's Eleven, but it was something else for a long time after that. Uh, oh, and the, the Bar Rescue, whatever. I you know, know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, anyway, there's this little tiny bar, and I had this punk rock band. Well, we were kind of like trying to be a punkier version of The Knack. But anyway, we played for punk and porn every Tuesday. That's where they put on porn on the video screens. <laughs> and we'd get up there and croon our songs. They were good songs. They were really good. And, uh, good porn, too. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, it wasn't like gay porn, was it? We we got paid in beer. <laughs> he doesn't want to answer that. No, no, it wasn't. He's they had to change it to anime. They decided that they anime. didn't want to pay for the, what do you call it, the, the actual fee to have it an adult establishment. So it went to anime porn, but whatever. But it, um, but they would pay us in pitchers of beer, and I was delighted with that. And our singer decided, <laughs> our singer decided that he didn't want to drink anymore. I'm, I quit drinking, so I'm going to ask him for money. <laughs> and, oh shit! And, and me and the. You're... Me and the drummer staged a protest again. I mean, just like <laughs> thinking back, you know, <laughs> no. Then we'll have to buy our own beer, dude. He's like, dude, it's like pitches of beer. I think they'd give it for you for free, three dollars. I don't know, dude. Let's get money. And I'm like, that money doesn't, doesn't make any sense Who at needs all, dude. That? <laughs> well, what's a, it's a matter. We're gonna take the money and buy beer with it. So <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> just take the beer. Just take yeah. the, the A to B, man. Did they, like, yeah, did they yeah. get like beer to go or no? You had to drink it there. Oh, I had to drink there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but yeah, they just be bringing us pitches of beer, you know. <laughs> All the girls at work there were roller girls and stuff. It was cool. Oh my god! I think there's actually bars. It's a different world now. <laughs> well, no, I think there's actually bars that still do that. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I heard. I'm not going to mention one. <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names. But was, uh, I, I tried to hook up the, this band with a, a, a brand new venue in a, in a different town near here, and they were, you know, they went and talked to them about playing a gig, and uh, I didn't hear anything really about it for a, like a month or two. So I. Talk to their singer, and I'm like, hey, whatever happened to that, you know, that gig over at that place I told you about? He goes, well, man, he goes, you know, playing for a bar tab when I was 18 or 20 was cool, but, you know, being 40, right. you know, it's not so cool anymore, yeah. so we had to kind of yeah. just pass it up, so. Yeah. It's a cool venue, too. It's 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 a drag when, when people don't realize that, you know, putting on a show, whether you're a cover band or whether you – are a blues band, a three-piece blues band playing in a dive bar, or whether you're playing in a stadium, it takes money, and it takes your time, and your time is is valuable. It's just as sure. valuable as anybody else's. So you know, and that, that's one thing. You know, it's just crazy. I, I went and saw, like I said, I mentioned the show. You know, earlier in the podcast, but uh, went and saw a killer show on Saturday night. Hanover's four great bands. Four, I mean, that's a rarity too to see to, to see a bill that has you know every band is good, you know. But Tony from three thirty three, you know, the f- he used to play with Push Monkey back in the day. Um, he puts together these great shows. I get to Hanover's, no cover. I'm like going, hmm. no tip jar. Hmm. I'm like going, you got four great bands. Where's who's, the money? Who's getting paid here? How are they yeah. paying these bands? I'm just like, going, are, are they just doing it just to do it or what? I'm like, mm. I know everybody was selling merch. You know, that's very important for bands, you know, to sell some merch. But Absolutely. I'm like, going, but I'm like, oh, I mean, how do you put together, you know, killer bills like that for, and, and charge no cover? I mean, it's great. I mean, to get people out of their house. I mean, they had a great crowd, real good crowd. Yeah. But how do you, I mean, how are the bands getting paid? I mean, I, I don't know. That's. I, mean, I, I can't say numbers, but I know that Broken Teeth plays there, and they don't do cover when we play there, and I know Broken Teeth does not play for free. Well, I know that, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, and I, I'm in the band. I can't tell you what the number is. I don't know. But I know that it's... <laughs> $12. That it, yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, no. I, That's what gets. I know that they, they, they won't book a gig without a Six gig. burgers. So somehow, <laughs> they're just doing it off the bar. It has to be. 
Yeah, it's or crazy. They're, or they're just, they're just averaging what they typically make in a night, paying the band a flat fee. Yeah. You know, based on the Well, there's a bunch of alcoholics there, so they sure I've made a lot of money. I thought about that right. when, right. when, you know, when we, just when Broke Teeth does do a gig there, I'm sitting there, like, just me being David, I'm sitting there concerned about the other bands. I'm like, because I don't, you know, I'm the one dude in the band that probably wouldn't say anything, but. And that's we, one. We might be taking all the money. I don't know. And that's one thing I got to bring up. I, I've told this story a couple times. I'm going to tell it again since you guys are here and I can butter his muffin a little bit. And Dave was always, always used to see Dave all the time. I mean, Broken Teeth has been around for how long? I've been in the band 13 years. 13 years. So well, I t- in a total, around, like almost 20, right? Yeah, I think 20. Yeah. Never seen him before. For whatever reason, just never got down. They were always the downtown band. And I right. never, I don't get downtown that much, you know. And uh, so finally, he goes, okay, here's the deal. He's always trying to get me. He's like, man, just, you know, I'll give you a T-shirt. I'll, I'll yeah, pay, yeah, for, I'll yeah, pay yeah. for you to get in. Why don't you come to my show, just, dude? I'll come, you know. I'll, Known you yeah. for 25 years. I know, forever. And you know, whatever, man, just come down and check it out. Just come down. And Bruce is, uh, Bruce is the same way, Bruce Rivers. Mm-hmm. And uh, so finally, they're playing Hanover. So I, I'm like, I said, I'm going to come check it out. Everybody's all excited. I'm going to come down and. Never saw him, and they came out. I don't know. It must have been the aligning of the fucking stars or or something. But man, it was like unfucking believable. The way the way the guy mixed the sound in that place, the band sounded so fucking tight, so loud. It was just I was fucking my doors were blown. I almost fucking started crying. I was so happy. It was like wow. they were so fucking good that night. You remember that night? And we do that every night. But <laughs> yeah, but I've, so now I've good seen answer, him. Good answer. Good answer. So, but now I've seen him three or four times. But. You know, since then, but that first night was the best time I've ever seen them. It was just something about that night, man. They just came out and fucking crushed. Yeah. And I told them, I remember, I remember going up to, I gave a hug and I said, dude, I said, this is what, the, this is the kind of shit this town needs. Yeah. This kind of fucking band. Real fiery band. Fiery yeah. band. But it was just, it, it was just the way, I, the, the, the guy that mixes that place, Chris, is a great sound guy. He knows that yeah. room. He knows what works, knows what doesn't work. And he just fucking lays it down. And it was just louder than, Fuck in that place that night. It yeah. was sounded so good, you know. Yeah, it we're, was one of those guess nights. What's going to happen around Rock Tavern this Saturday? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> we're actually bringing in an, uh, a separate sound system for the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, and you guys got like a laser light show, yeah, and, and there's going to be lasers, and magic, and shit. Magic and a and a and a, and a and a pony and. Right. Yeah. A pony. <laughs> wow. It's is Dave, Dave. going to ride in on a it's, pony? Is that how it's going to work? It's something like that. Very nice. It's the horse show, you know. So when you are, so when you guys are, are you guys doing like two sets, three sets? How are you working this? Um, I'm not doing the donkey show again. I'm just <laughs> telling you right now. I'm not gonna <laughs> it works so well in rehearsal. <laughs> he, hasn't, he hasn't walked the same since. Instead of instead of the bow, he, it's hop along. <laughs> That's why they call him Hop Along Dave. That's right. No, we're doing. We don't. Um, and this is something that that I think I've always been kind of against is is doing is playing 45 Anybody minutes and taking a break i'm good uh it's like taking is playing you know a 45 minute set taking a break you know playing another 45 minute set and taking a break you want to one yes sorry oh, okay. i'm sorry dude I'm <laughs> <laughs> no really i'm listening yeah, yeah 45 um, minutes take a break 45 minutes take right this thing what do you, so, do you want so so <laughs> i've been against get that. to the point i'm, I'm not i'm not i'm i think that when you do that Number one, you lose your audience. Number two, um, you lose the momentum of the of the show. And part of this whole thing is not just playing a bunch of Zeppelin songs, but actually creating kind of an experience that that is similar to that experience that you would have gotten back in whenever seventy two or whatever. You know, we don't dress like them certainly. Hell no. As much <laughs> as it would be great for you to be wearing that, you know. <laughs> Hell no. Ruffly, <laughs> ruffly, ruffly, you know, no. John Paul Jones no. outfit they, with the little They don't heart. make that intent. Right. They don't make it on my side. <laughs> intent. 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 <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, no, it, it's, you know, no, no, se- no broken sets. No broken sets. I, it's, it's, you play straight through and that's Nick's that. I like, could have sworn when I saw you last time you guys did like two sets, I think. If we did, it was probably. Um, Switch to the acoustic in between. Yeah, that. I think we did like an acoustic set where. We did like, you know, some of the stuff from from Zeppelin three and maybe going to California and stuff like that. But that that's a Thomas. Oh, but you guys got um, Robert's new band opening, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Diamond Star Halo. Diamond Star Halo. So he's going to they're going to they're going to kind of start the night off and play like 45 minutes. And then and then uh, we're we'll going to take Amsterdam. over from there. So 
Am wow. I, am I wrong that... Yes, you are. That uh, <laughs> Round Rock... Tavern. Tavern. Round Rock. Done at midnight. I think... Is that right? You might be correct. Last I heard, we played till one. Yeah. Because otherwise, we won't play long. Why was I thinking that they, that's one of the venues in around that... But then again, that may not be... That may not be inaccurate because I thought we were going to go on. Are we going on at 10? I thought we were going on at 10. No. Are you paying attention? They're playing 10 to 1040. We're playing 11 to 1. That's I thought they played from I'm a band meeting on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. how you advertise. I mean, there you go. Oh, there you go. On the facet book. Just okay. look there. He keeps everything nice and tidy. I just nice. Do not. Do I just throw the paint on the walls and he so makes sure that it's next Maybe it's different on Saturdays or something, but it seems uh. like. Like Round Rock closes down at midnight. <laughs> Why don't we check? Man, We're done you, you're midnight. you're you're right on. Uh, I th- it's not a two o'clock zone. No, I think not. it might be like one. Mm. I'm trying to remember because I now I, we I never now we got to confirm that I, I go like we go there That's all frightening. We go yeah, there. I've, I've been the, thinking about that all week. I'm going. We go there all the time, but we <laughs> never stay until like super minutes. late. Right, We're always out of there because oh, it's always the thing like we'll go and watch a band there, and then we'll head down to Hanover and head over to. H two or wherever we're going right. on the way, kind of a thing, you know. Okay, I'm being told it's one o'clock on Saturdays. Sweet, one o'clock on Saturdays. Yeah, it's twelve in the week, definitely. All right, so people, Ron Rock Tavern Saturday night, Moby Dick. It's the and mar- mar- show mar- is going to start at what nine nine ish. Well, what time does Diamond Star Halo go on? Ten. Ten. Ten o'clock. I think so. Be there at nine o'clock. You don't want to miss them though. Nine thirty. It's gonna be Bobby and it's, it's their first show, right? It's it their is very their first, first show. show yeah, some cool. talented people in that group too. So eh, it's debatable, but you know, <laughs> that's another podcast. <laughs> he knows I'm just fucking quick with him. On that, dude. <laughs> right. He knows I'm just fucking with him. <laughs> but that's to be seen because we haven't seen him yet. We can't. I don't want to hype him up too good that's because right. what the problem is, and you hype okay. someone up real good. You go see them and it's a letdown, and people are going to yell. Yeah. You said these guys were great. I'm like, hey, you know, we don't mean, yeah. well, yeah. well, for me, I'm just. Yeah, and, don't you count, scol- don't. and you scolded them for reacting with your show, too. That's right. So. Yeah. That's the first that's thing too. you did out of the gate. That's right. <laughs> like, hey, leave me alone. <laughs> hey. Uh, watch my show and leave me alone, basically. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you. Uh, and then we talked about celebrities being jerks dicks. <laughs> to people, yeah. <sighs> that's, that's pretty much everything we talked about, isn't it? Yeah. 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 That's, that's <laughs> a, a nice recap so far. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good recap. My love for the stones. Now. Your love for the st- yeah. your lack of lack of love for we'll the stones. Ch- we'll change you yet. No. Yeah, we're we'll no. gonna we're gonna make that happen. Gotta give you. Some, what the hell some, are you listening to these I, days? I know. What are you listening to? Besides the Beatles, the Beatles are cool. I'm not saying that the Beatles are bad. I'm just you know. Well, let's say can't so listen to the Beatles <laughs> all the time. No. So the MP3 in the car right now of Beatles, Paul McCartney. It, it's gonna go all the way. <laughs> yeah, it's still the same Beatles. shit. So it, George yeah, Harrison. Beatles. John yeah, Lennon. sure. Um, bad, bad finger. Abba, Journey, which he's gonna give me shit for. <laughs> Journey's, no, Journey's good. Um, Journey's Chicago. Good. As long as that. you're listening to the um, early Journey and not and not you know. I listen to the ones I like. Shut up. Um, <laughs> yeah, shut Journey. Up. Ooh, Jesus. Joe Cocker. There you go. He's on there. Um, shit. Like I said, I mean, it's all just a mix. I got Willie on there. No, there you go. Well, raw little Willie. You need Willie. Every now and then. You need yeah. Willie. It's a good mix, though. Yeah, especially with he Julio Iglesias. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Julio. To all the girls I love oh, you for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one right there. Classic. Yeah, it's like, you know, with me and Dave, it's all about, it's all about like, hard rock and metal. Nah. I'm well, yeah, I mean, I'm it is, man. Place. I'm all over the place, too. But, like, the last few years, I just get such an earful of music at oh, work. Sticks. You know, like, I work at a music school, and I'm co- I am have to learn songs for weddings. Every week of my life, so right? You're, you're all, you you have to burnt be all out, over the place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ironically, the wedding I'm playing this Friday, their first dance is "Thank You." Oh, it's nice. a good tune. That's they a want, they song. want the Chris Cornell version. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. yeah they so. probably don't even know Zeppelin did it, huh? Yeah. Like, uh, who's oh, Zeppelin? No, I'll find that Chris out. Cornell song. <laughs> it's, it seems like they asked for some more stuff that's kind of older, so they, I think they might be pretty hip to it. But yeah. that's what I love when like like newer bands will like take a Stone song or take a Zeppelin song, and younger kids think it's that they wrote it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I, my, at the guitar school, this kid came in one day. You're going to love this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I love the original, Bubba. Move no, on. This this kid comes in and he goes, man, the Beatles just butchered that Guns N' Roses song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be Paul McCartney, but some different right. wings. I, I, that's why I told him, I go, 
every bit of what you just said was wrong. That's yeah. right. I know. <laughs> Everything so, you just so, said so, was completely so wrong. So going back, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. go back to your car. <laughs> right. Yeah. Come going back to, out and start over. So oh. with those lines, he gave me crap the other day because I said the first time I actually got introduced to Jimmy Page was him playing the guitar Jesus. with a... Uh, um, P. Diddy for the Godzilla soundtrack. Oh, oh my how bad, how that's bad! That's how was I knew that? Cashmere. What? And oh, they sampled yeah, Cashmere did, on that Cashmere, one. So yeah. that's how I knew Cashmere and how I knew uh, Page. Oh. That's so it doesn't it doesn't matter how you find it. That's as like long bizarre as you find world. <laughs> yeah. to me. I remember when that but came out. At least out, you made it out alive. You know? I remember when that came out and I was watching it. I saw the video and I'm like, going, oh, the world is gonna end. Yeah, the world is gonna. This end. is the official. This is the sign of the apocalypse. When you got Puff Daddy rapping over Cashmere, I'm like, right, shit, that's how it started. And Jimmy Page in the video. And then Metallica followed that's when and you put know. the whole the whole strings behind him. It started the whole thing. I think with with, with Metallica, with that is, I mean. First of all, you're Metallica. Right? You're that they have to be like one of the biggest bands on the planet. They just have to be, and they can do no wrong. They really can't do any wrong these days. You know, what I mean, they put out a, a couple trashy records. They still yeah. sold, right? But I think they're just bored now. They're like, you know, let's just do something different. So when they did the S and M thing, I mean, mm. that that was that that time and place where like you know Kiss was doing it, Aerosmith did it, right? You know, so hey, let's fucking do it. You know, they they got an offer from some big orchestra. Why not? You know. Well, Deep Purple did that once. Yeah, too, let's right? go make a fucking a double album and go sell ten million, make some more money. You know, what the what the, what's the you know? But we can all I agree now that it's been done, 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 done. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I but don't know. Maybe we should do it. No, no, that'd be awesome. <laughs> With two karate chops. <laughs> all no. on the same stage at no. the tavern. That's right at the tavern. Yes, yeah, we're sitting, just gonna fill the entire club with an orchestra. Since we'll yeah, be at the get, appropriate venue for that, you guys yeah. can play out the front porch there. That's right. Your, your drums are gonna. They go. do have an outside, don't they? Is that is that the place? It's it's inside. It's yes, inside, it's inside, but they do in. have a outside little area. I do believe I haven't been out there, but I think they have one. They do have an outside area. I think I've seen. It's Brad a cool little there. club, though. Yeah, yeah, it's you know. I'll tell you that whole area is really popping right now. So is it on the side of, of the Quinn side or on the other side? What it's on the Quinn side. Quinn side. Yes. Okay. It's on, when you're walk when you're going down, you're going the east. Are you talking about? I guess coming from Quinn down, Brass Tap to your left. Yeah. And so forth. So it's down that way. Yeah, it's like it's like w- you come off a of 35, you're on 79 or whatever it is right yes. there. It's like one of the first bars you hit. Gotcha. It's like right there. It's like a little it's like a little curve kind of a thing they got now, right near Ron Rock Donuts. You know where that's at? Yes. <laughs> Damn, I walked into that one, didn't I? Anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you like those big donuts? You ever yeah. seen those donuts? Dude, those big amazing. ones? Forget about it. No, they suck. It's not drugs. No, that's the <laughs> point. You're they right. are not good You're because right. they're so big that <laughs> you don't get them done properly. Dude, are you kidding me? The dough is not done. You need the small ones. No. Fuck let, you hey, and the big l- ones. Let me oh, yourself. yeah, you can't buy them. Hey, like, let me tell you something. So raw dough. I'm gonna tell you something. Tell I know you. it doesn't get baked all the way. Are, are you a foodie? I I, I, <laughs> I get that part. I mean, I, I, I don't know if they see it out there, but no, yeah, but I mean, no, no. I haven't skipped a meal no. in forever. Well, okay. Here's the deal. I I love food, and my my girlfriend's a ask him is a gourmet yeah, cook. She, she, I mean, she is Mister Calling in Life. She's like one of those chicks. Can, so, anyways, I, you, I think you know about this story because you probably heard about it from somebody. Um, I'm a big sweets guy. I love ice cream. I love cake. I love all yeah. that shit. I'm a, I love, I'm Italian. I love all that. I just love that shit. Anyways, she goes, I'm going to make homemade donuts, right? So this is what she does. Listen to this shit. She gets biscuit batter, right? Oh, wow. She rolls it up into a donut, and she fries it, lightly, lightly fries it. And then she takes it out, and she puts cinnamon on it. She puts powdered sugar on it. Dude. Then she puts, like, Oh chocolate sauce on it, right? And brings me over one. And I'm a big when it comes to food, I'm I'm about texture. When you're eating food, it's like, you know, a, a uh what do you call it? A um a cheesecake has to have a certain texture to right. it. You know, that kind of yep. shit, you know? So I bit into this thing and it was just so light and fluffy on the inside, and it was, you know what I mean? So she brings me one. And she goes, well, let me try another one. I gotta, I'm going to try this one, a different one. So she brings it over. And it's got some other kind of little topping on it, right? And there's two more. So I'm just watching TV. I'm eating these things. Come to find out, I ate six of these fucking things, right? <laughs> yes. No, no, no. But I had I had sugar overload. Right. And I was like, right. I, and I thought I was going to get sick. I was right. like, I felt bad like the whole next day. But they were so fucking delicious. Yeah. 
And they blew away any Round Rock donut. If I'm serious, I'm gonna have her make them one of these days. That's, if you're into donuts, that's a, to me, that's a bold claim. Yeah, but man. I, but I'm I not do even, dude. I'm not even fucking basket, kidding you. The, the, the biscuit. I'll the put biscuit these motherfuckers batter, up against anything that, they got. That, that that's a that's a sign that that could, it's probably biscuit batter, and she sense. fried it like in I don't. know, It was some kind of certain oil she did it, but it like, it, but it's not like cooked for a long time. Lightly fried, right? When you bite into it, it's all it's like it's, you know, in a warm yeah. biscuit. Right. Oh Jesus Christ, unbelievable. <laughs> You're making me hungry. With the with, with, she put cinnamon, she, she put oh, cinnamon on one, she, like powdered sugar on another, and then chocolate sauce. But I had like six of them. Jeez. But they were so delicious. She's phenomenal cook. Yeah. Phenomenal cook. For my but anyways, that's where that club is. It's right over near Round Rock Tavern. Sure. I mean Round Rock Donuts. She's good at me. whipping up shirts too. Yeah, she, she is. Yeah, Ameritrash. I need to get one of those by the way. I'll get you one. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yep, she's actually Come doing on. some of our shirts. She's got a lot of stuff going on now. Yep. That we'll have available at. The uh, at the tavern bling shirts. I'm sorry. Are they bling shirts? Bling. Shirts. I got some cool bling shirts coming up. <laughs> I mean, that actually bling? with sequins on them and stuff. Mm, or yes. Blink, blink. Do you want? Do you want like the oh, like a geez. Christmas sweater that blinks? Yes. That's what oh, we're gonna Jesus. sell at the show. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's it's gonna go like. What do we mean by bling shirts? I think he means like bizat bedazzled, bedazzled. Shirts. Oh yeah, yeah. With, with the okay, yeah. so no. rhinestones and all that no. shit. Yeah, whatever you call. It. I don't. I don't speak your language. That's stuff. Bedazzled. Like. That's English. <laughs> <laughs> no rhinestones are like um, just little. Right, right. I know. Yeah. This, okay. The stone. I'm just, I'm just playing with you. I got that. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the be beda- well, actually um that's what they, what they call I guess bedazzling I guess I don't know. Yeah, very rhinestone work, very hard. You to need to put right. that on the rim of your bass drum. You got to bedazzle that thing. <laughs> right. Mm. Just they get so flat. The As just like they said in uh, Dead in, in the movie Deadpool, they're 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 shirts, not not chandeliers. That's good. Bunch yeah, I think it, I think the delivery is better in the movie than the yeah. You know, what movie? Is. he was talking about the dude's jeans right at the right. very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So hey, so does anybody know? Is there a cover at this show? There is a cover, and I know that normally there is not a cover at this place. Um, but Sometimes part of that is uh, well, most of that honestly is because we are bringing in separate sound and lights and. So do you know what the that. cover is? Uh, it's five dollars. Five dollars, and the reason I'm telling you this is because people don't carry cash anymore. Either they don't have it, that's right, or they got a damn debit card. That's right. So when you go into the Round Rock Tavern on Saturday, make sure you have a fi- a crisp five dollar bill. Crisp. And if you're bringing somebody with you, you have a crisp ten dollar bill. That's right. Or quarters. They or might, quarters. They might take quarters. I don't know. I think they'll take quarters as long as they're counted and enrolled. That's so right. So don't bring them unrolled quarters. That's right. So Steve, no quarters. No, no quarters. quarters. No, there you go. No quarters. Boom. Look at that. The Metal Crew show. We. I forgot. Look, I knew a title. Yeah, we <laughs> totally forgot. <laughs> we just forgot. No We're too excited to do the <laughs> show. I was like. That you know what, and I actually brought that up to Brett. Can we talk about this? I mean, I don't even. Yeah, go right ahead. Okay. I I walked in and I'm like going, who's working the door? I thought it was like five bucks again, and no one was working the door, and looked around and no one was working the door. (laughs) Also scary. And I'm like, oh, you got a lot of people here, and nobody paid to get in here. What's the deal? I know because they actually had, you had to pay for sound and and lights and production and Mm -hmm. everything. And I mean, if you don't have someone at the door collecting money, I guess. You'd be paying for that shit out of your pocket, you know what I mean? So yeah. So I think at the end of the night, Brett announced, "Hey man, you know, we're gonna pass around this boot. Yeah, this we're gonna p- boot. pass around a boot. <laughs> the boot. No, it was like just a a water container, All right. or whatever they call those things. And it's a beer pitcher. Or that whatever. will not be beer, the method. Beer pitcher will not be the method this coming Saturday. No. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we actually talked to the, or at least Bobby. They have a guy doing it, or have yeah, they got a guy going. So. Cool. One for me, one for you, one for the <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just the thing. We 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 loaded in for that gig, and we're like, oh, we we should just start. And then we're halfway through the show. We're like, who's working the door? You know, I was, was gonna say to something, but I was like, it was all uh, up to us, you know. And you know, I guess we had our mind on other things, ho- hoping that we can get through the. Well, gig. I think Brett said something about it. Like he could, they, he said it was we couldn't find anybody that wanted to do it or something like that. I think that's what he yeah. told me. Yeah, I'm like going, oh, yeah, I don't know. Because I, I think everybody was having that so show, much. That show was just all like thrown together. Like, yeah, I think everybody wanted to have fun, and no one wanted to stay by the door and just kind of hang out. Like, oh, I'm gonna miss out on some fun. You know? Right. I'm just collecting money. Yeah. So. So that's why we're gonna have a goon this Saturday. You need you need a goon. Seriously, yeah. you need a 
A big goon. A big goon. A big goon. They collect money and shit. Don't let it nobody for free. No guest list, no nothing. Well, and it's and and, <laughs> and, and it's not like we're say? trying to pocket, you know, a bunch of money. All, just want to pay for really, your expenses. We just want to cover the the cost of of bringing in what we want to bring in to make yeah. it fun, you know fun for everybody and an experience. So. You know the thi- the thing is, I think with a lot of bands, I'm going to say most bands these days is you want to at least cover your expenses. You don't want to be paying out of pocket to play. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah. So if you if you break even, I mean, these days, I guess that's a good thing, you know. Yeah. You know, doing a gig like this, I'm doing it because I love it. Yeah. Yep. If I got to go play Jesse's Girl and stuff like that, I'm gonna get some cash. <laughs> I'm walking out with cash. <laughs> well, and lots of it. Lots, lots of it. it. <laughs> lots of that's it. Right. Yeah. And that's a pretty. And I think I'm deal. just I'm to the point where I'm burned out from playing Jesse's Girl and and related, which is why I won't even do it for cash right now. Well. <laughs> Eventually, I may get back to the point where I could right. say, yes, I, I do really. I might need to use you for a gig at some point, and, and the money will be probably <laughs> stunningly different. It would be an offer I can't refuse. Probably. Either your brains or your, or your drums will be on this music. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You, you know. <laughs> oh. All right. Anyways, well, people, this is, the part of, this is the part of the podcast, and I preach this every podcast because people need to know this. You know, this has turned into, man, we're almost at 100 episodes, and this has turned into like a local music podcast where all the local bands come up and just shoot the shit and have a good time, and yeah. some episodes are gold and some of them aren't, but, you know, you kind of roll the dice, that's the way it works, but on the flip side of that coin, um, people that are listening to this, you know, this is all about supporting local live music, either in Austin Dallas, San Antonio, Houston, wherever your town is, you know, um, Austin just has happens to have such a great music scene with some great bands and great musicians and great artists. Um, but all I can tell you is you need to get out there and support these bands and these musicians. Thing is, like we were talking tonight, great bills all around town every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And even during the week, there's great stuff going on. Great venues, too. Great venues. So, you know, instead of it, at least once a week, go out, check out a new band, check out a new club, you know, the covers. I mean, if there's if there's a, a cover for the band, I mean, pay five bucks, you know, you're uh, going to get a cup of coffee that day. Anyway, and you're going to pay the same amount of money. Exactly. You're going to be at Starbucks buying a, a cup of ass juice for five bucks. Right. You know, you might as well just forget about the ass juice for the day and put that five dollars and go see a band, you know, Saturday night. You know, over at Round Rock Tavern, Moby Dick, you know. But uh, here's the thing. <laughs> you want to go. No, no ass juice on Saturday. No, no ass say. juice on <laughs> Saturday. You get, you, get your, you get your cup of ass juice on Sat- on Sunday morning after the game. <laughs> It'll still be there. Five dollars for a cup of coffee. That's even the cheap side. But anyways, but, you know, a lot of these shows are free. So go out and check out the band. You know, if the band doesn't have a cover, go in, man, check them out. If they got a tip jar, go up and tip them, man. If they got a merch stand, buy a T-shirt, buy a CD. Buy a sticker, buy whatever they got going on. Because a lot of times, that um, that T-shirt you're buying is a 20 spot or a 15 spot for the guys to put tank money in their gas tank to Absolutely. get get home. You know, a lot of guys. I mean, a lot of these guys are way in South Austin playing gigs way up north in Austin, North Austin, and that costs money in their gas tank. So if they're not getting any kind of money, you know, but just get out and support. Another thing which is really cool, I don't know if you if you noticed, I'm sure you have, that some of the clubs in town now, when you because everybody pays with a card now, mm-hmm. no one carries cash anymore. Right. I don't think I don't remember the last time I saw some cash. My wallet's always empty. But anyways, um, what they're doing for when you swipe your card, you get your receipt. It's got like your total, then it says tip, mm-hmm. but then it says has a band tip on yes. it. You know, so I was out about a month ago and. I saw it, like, cool. I like the band. Gave him 10 bucks. Yep. You know? Um, I don't know how they worked that to get it to the band, but uh, it's another avenue to pay the band because I know, you know, not every band's getting paid. Yeah. And that's... Without a doubt. Without I a mean, doubt. We've, we've done gigs, and I'm sure <laughs> you have as well, where, I mean, literally, you get $6 for, for, for the night, basically. But you paid 10 for parking since it's down 10. <laughs> yeah, 10? 10 for parking? There well, was yeah, a because we walked away. I, I, there Ten was a place. For a there was there was a place I paid I think thirty dollars to park. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And and there's there's no me. First of all, there's no musician parking. 
to load into a club, you get the the stink guy from from the police. Yeah, you know? I had one. I had one one guy who's basically like, "You need to move your car right now, or I'm writing you a ticket." And it's obvious I was loading my stuff out of a club. I was going to be there five more minutes yeah. at the most, and you know, it, so there's no there's no consideration really for for musicians and and the whole the whole idea of the 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 tip line on a receipt i think is a, is something that every major city should adopt because bands work their asses off to play these 45 yeah. minute sets or if they're playing longer you know they're working three times as hard for very little money a lot of these guys are you know have families a lot of them you know this is their sole line of income oh and, yeah and they're relying on on people to to pay them well that's why you see like a lot of guys that are just you know when they fill out their w2 it says musician on it and they're playing four or five bands yep. you know to make ends meet yeah that's the reason why yeah not everybody can be in a great cover band that makes a ton of money or, or a wedding band that makes a ton of money not everybody has those kind of gigs right which are sweet gigs yeah you know um but another thing too is people need to get out there and and go to these venues to see bands because what's going to happen is if people stop going to these venues, the venues are going to stop having bands and then exactly. the bands are not going to have anywhere to play and then they're going to be screwed all the way around. So it's a domino effect, you know. So people Absolutely. need to get out and just just get out, yeah. you know, and go check out a band you haven't seen before. If you ha- if there's a, a good buzz about a band you've heard, go check them out, man. Give them give them an hour of your time, you know. Yeah. So yeah, I've I've I mean we've discovered bands by partly because we played with them. I mean right. one of the bands that I'm a big fan of is a band that plays a lot down in South Austin. They're called the Reverend Few, and they're they're a great band. They're kind of it, it's this this uh, singer her name's Paige, and uh, Nick and Dave play, plays I'm slide guitar and and John's on drums and Amanda's and on uh, Amanda's on bass and. And they're all equally talented people, but you bring these guys together, and they're a fantastic band. They're very kind of roots rock type thing, but you know, they're one of the bands. Another band, Tomorrow the FCs. the FCs. They're fantastic. Soul, Otis Redding. I mean, just all these bands that we've just discovered playing these clubs, and and I mean, they're just out there for people to discover them and yeah. and, and and find you know find these bands that that could be the way that music was for us. Yeah. You know, life changing. I mean, I remember sitting around listening to Beatles records and reading the lyrics on the back, and those are the kinds of things that, that change your life and shape you, who you are as a person. Yeah. yeah, so I've heard there's a Moby Dick band playing this Saturday. Yeah, so. that's what I heard. <laughs> I heard. A Moby Dick. We might we might change your life too. Yeah. Life changing. I should probably we come change by. change your life, Steve. I'll come by and check it out. You should. <laughs> yes. That'll I'll be come fun. By. Bring the family too. We're sure. gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna head down and check you guys out. Sure. Cool. Indeed. Hell yeah. Why not? It'd be fun. Five dollars. I will have a crisp ten dollar bill for me and Kristen. There you go. Nice. And we'll <laughs> I'll take it right now. <laughs> Are we doing advanced tickets? No. No. Advanced tickets. Oh right. shit. VIP section. VIP section. That's right. It's a cool little Do club. Do they get though. parking? I'm sorry. Does VIP get parking? Do no. we get parking? <laughs> There's places to park down there. I don't I don't know. I, I, I don't think, think you just park. Yeah, you just park, park anywhere, but they have like spots now. It's not like it's you know, oh, parking good. meters and stuff. Well, I'm just, I'm used to. They <laughs> haven't. They haven't. No parking. You might have to park a little farther away. You know, and not a couple, couple blocks. But it's not too bad though. No. Yeah, you'd be fine. You go. Well, you're gonna get there early anyway, so you have to worry, really worry about it too right. much. Yeah, we're gonna lo- load in early, early. We're yeah, we're like <laughs> noon. I think noon no, is what yeah. we're somewhere around noon. No, I think right. or maybe even earlier than that. Didn't be he? done by noon. Yeah. Be I think done loading in by noon. Yeah, something like that. I know that we're just. So I know that what? So I know that lights are going first. I got a and late sound. gig the night before. Oh, it pro. goes lights, sound, and then us. Okay, is what we're is the way it's. I hear you got a puppet show before. Is yeah. that the opening act? I heard something's going <laughs> it's on. Laser with the light show. show, and then well, the they're trying to get me to do the donkey show again. I'm not doing <laughs> that. All right. The donkey yeah. show. Yeah. I saw a little preview <laughs> of the laser thing too. It's pretty cool. Is it cool? Yeah. Tijuana Dave yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, chicle, show. chicle. <laughs> in in the sound guy, you all have used before, right? Uh, I know Bobby has. I don't believe that I have, but I okay. can't confirm that. So, no confirmation on the Cobra Cast right now. Check no. that out later. Nah. 
I'm sure your phone's gonna start buzzing here in a second. He's gonna yeah, we'll, we'll pop put, up. We'll put in the comments if we try the sound guy before. Sure. All right. Sure. We'll let you know. I'm sure somebody has. <laughs> I've heard he's great though. I've heard. What's his name? You got a name? Um. I Bobby actually Lee do either. have a name because he. Well, the reason why I say is like uh, on my way down here, I talked to Brett McCormick, and he was talking about having seen you guys in the past. And he was like, "Oh, and the sound guy just knew how to hit the delay on the right part of the vocal lines." And, and that's knew the so songs. important. That's yeah, important. Knew, knew the songs. Yeah, Mike Roan is uh, is doing sound for us. Okay. So. Um, I think I've heard of him before. Yeah. Hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I got to do some ads. Do your thing. I got Rock sponsors, out. man. Are you leaving? No, I'm waiting for you to do your ads. Oh, ad. shit. Yeah, okay. Ads. Well, guys can help me with We're going to participate. Them. Are you really? Yes. You know anything about ear splitting media? Uh, tell us more. We'd love to hear it. I thought you <laughs> might know something. <laughs> read the card. I'm going to read the card. <laughs> <laughs> read the c- There's not much on it. I mean, you know. Ear. Ear splitting media. Like, like ear splitting. Dana Red Lee Cooper. There you go. Anyways, our, um, right. if you're needing any kind of social, they're a social media company. Right. As the name would probably, ear splitting media. Mm-hmm. So there's media there. Um, anyways, ear splitting media is a social media company. If you need any kind of help with social media, doing with a band, a brand, a business, an event, these are the people you want to help you because they help me on the podcast big time. Because I'm, you know, I'm okay with Facebook. Okay, eh, not so great with Twitter and, and and Instagram and stuff. But they have a team that, you know, if I post something up, they'll take it and, and run with it. I mean, honestly, I'll post like this whole thing right here. When I posted uh, about tonight's episode, um, I think I, I did it right at noon. And at 12.01, it was repost like seven or eight times yeah. all over the place. Well, and that's important, too, because like. You didn't get into the business of, of social media. You're doing podcasts. Yeah, you know but, what I mean? But people, and bands are the same way. But people don't. The, it's one thing, you know, the little incident we had went through like last night and everything. Uh, the reason people don't understand how much goes, not not just the podcast, but what goes into it and, you know, getting episodes ready and going on social media. And it just it's like a full time gig, man. I mean, I'm in this room probably besides podcasting, probably 20, 25 hours a week. At least, yeah, working on all sorts of stuff, you know. But anyways, getting back to them, they are like super great at what they do. They all have bands in town, so they put together these great events. Um, but anyways, ear splitting media is bringing underground bands above ground and into the spotlight. They are the home of the two YouTube series, Out on the Town, and the Call Online Video Magazine. Now, the Call Online Video Magazine has local CD and show reviews. So if you have a band that has a brand new CD or a show you want them to review, they'll come out and review both. Yeah. It's a really cool little That's thing. That's cool. Yeah. And um, they've been doing it for a while now. Um, I, w- I got to go and see who's on it this month for the next podcast. So anyways, Ear Splitting Media's promotion and post content can take your band from the background into the eyes and ears of people from all over the world. So hit them up on their Facebook page for more info. I mean, they're all over Twitter. They're all over Instagram. They're all over Facebook. So go on any of those and look up Ear Splitting Media. And they're actually doing like a lot of bands in town, their their social media right now. I know they're doing all of Dharma King stuff. Hmm. They're doing Chasing After Alice's stuff, um, just a bunch of bands. They're doing my stuff, too, so that's kind of cool. It really helped me out because I need help. <laughs> 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 now, the next one you all know about big time. Uh, are you needing merch for your band, your brand, or your business? Always. I know I need merch. You see my shot glasses? You haven't seen my shot glasses? Holy shit, yo. Have you seen the, s- the shirt oh, I that I made for yeah, Steve? You see this? You drink yes. out of one of these? Yeah, I drink out of them when I was here with Ken. Oh, oh that's right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the chemical. She had those. Anyways, Love Crystal, that, Crystal cool. Jordan Creative Branding can take care of all your merch needs. Like I said, she did that. She's doing all my stuff. So everything in this room that has anything to do, she did the Ameritrash stuff. Um, and she's doing the Moby Dick stuff. She's doing the Moby Dick stuff. We're all one big happy family. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, well, and you know quality when you, I mean, she's great to work with. She's very thorough and detailed, yeah. and I mean, she's just amazing. So and she cooks, and, and she, she cooks, cooks, cooks and donuts. she cooks well too. And she makes donuts out of biscuit batter. That's the nice. dude. I shouldn't have even gave that secret out. Now you guys, now, gonna she's now gonna y'all gonna try you it. You guys now. are gonna be, you're gonna get beat after this, dude. I'm telling you, <laughs> not even kidding you, not even kidding you. How yeah. great these things were. 
Anyways, um, you know, it's weird. You can't say koozie anymore. Did you know about that? Is it trademarked now? It's trademarked. It's oh trademarked. So, what, so our new phrase is can condom. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so anything from shirts and canned condoms to stickers and banners, whatever you need, she could print your logo on it. So, anyways, you can find Crystal Jordan on Facebook. Or at on the web at crystaljordan.com. And she spells her name with an I. So it's C R I S T A L. So contact her today and she will take care of you. And that's Crystal Jordan Creative Branding. Boom. That's it. Yes. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> One more time. It's getting hot in here all of a sudden. It is hot in here. Fucking AC. I know I paid the bill, so. <laughs> I know I fucking paid the bill. <laughs> I, I got a, like a lights in here. I got a lava lamp. I got candles. I mean, right. you know, very mood yeah. oriented. Tip you five dollars for this. What's that? We got to tip you five dollars. Five dollars. We got to pay five dollars for this. You gave us an experience. Shit costs money. Yeah, well, I don't know. I might be owing you money for the experience. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, Saturday night, Round Rock Tavern, Moby Dick, and Diamond Star Halo, starting at ten o'clock. Five dollar cover. Five dollars make you holler. That's right. <laughs> and Dave with the Donkey Show, maybe, probably that's gonna be we after. Can get him, if we can that's get probably gonna be enough. that's probably gonna be yeah. after hours in the alley. That's so right. So that's the p- can't do that. Post you know. show. <laughs> that's the post show. The after party. I'm gonna be doing a live podcast from the Donkey <laughs> Show. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, tune in. <laughs> that's right. You guys, got anything else? No, they just thank you uh, for having us, and Appreciate we're looking forward to seeing everybody on Saturday. It's going to be awesome, and we're glad to be kind of back in the swing. And I know. I'm happy that you guys are back, because I was wondering what happened to you. Yeah. You guys just kind of disappeared. Well, uh, part of it, too, is that you know you don't want to necessarily saturate everybody to the saturate? point. Saturate? You guys played once a year. How are you saturating anything? <laughs> It's like a, true. it's sort of like a like a you know a five minute rain in a desert. You know what I mean? That's true. <laughs> You're That's true. Well, hopefully we'll You're play like more than truck. once a year. You're like a dump truck, you dropped a load and you left, and then <laughs> you never saw you again. <laughs> 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 you never came yeah. back. Yeah. Now your now your dump truck is full, and you're gonna come back and drop another load. Oh, uh, we're that's gonna. Right. Yeah, that's Good right. Deal. But ho- hopefully, there's gonna be more loads to drop. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> shit. <laughs> So what's your shit ain't working for me? No, it's not working for anybody. That's right. Yeah. People need some Zeppelin in their lives. That's right. My brother Dave, what do you got? I know you got about 10,000 things going on. Oh. What do you got going on? Wow, you know what? Uh, the, the Moby Dick show. I'm trying to think of other things I have coming up. Uh, nothing public, really. No teeth shows? There's no teeth shows, not locally. Um, uh, there's another Metal Crew show in the works. Oh, that's right. That was a good time. We had a good time. Yeah. So I got a plate. It was pretty crazy. You missed yeah. it. You got really? Drums awesome. on that song. Yeah. Nice. I killed it. Man, I'm forgetting something. <laughs> I know I am. You know what what's really like, funny? What about like big balls? Are you doing big balls? Now? Yeah, but um, and there's there is something on the calendar that's escaping me. But that's all right. Yeah. Um, it's been so exciting the last couple of months that now it's kind of kind of winding down and the holidays are you're coming playing, out. wait a minute when are you playing uh are you playing the mohawk or are you playing stay gold are you playing one of those with the with <laughs> big balls there is a mohawk gig yeah that's yeah. i thought i saw that the mohawk well there was a, a, a big balls gig recently that i didn't do i had uh my friend paul sub for me but yeah, man. Like my calendar has a bunch of stuff that's not really public gigs. So yeah, if y'all want to come see me and you don't want to have to get married to do it, <laughs> <laughs> you better come to. Or if you do, <laughs> that's a good yeah, one. That's something for a business card right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta, awesome. Gotta I love come that. Out to Round Rock Tavern. That's the only. Well, and of course to see the mighty David Beeson go to the Round Rock Tavern. That's right. Yeah. So is it, so this is going to be a steady lineup. I'm I'm hoping. I'm yes. Hoping. Yes. yes, I'm yes. nervous. I want to do a good job. If he does anything like what he's doing in rehearsal, this is going to be a very steady. Yeah, I'm not worried. Dave is fantastic. He is. We're very happy to have him. He, he's the equivalent of what they say: the guy that can sing the phone book. He just plays it. Yeah. Right? yeah well, it's Jimmy Page, man. I just want to do justice. Are you bringing a bow with you? I'm not bringing a bow. I'm bringing oh, a theremin. Shit. Uh, theremin. 
Are you gonna bring one of those? Oh, oh yeah. nice. I like those. We haven't. We're yeah. not doing Dazed and Confused yet. Yeah, we will be doing it. Dun, 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 I do dun, have dun, two dun, dun, bows, dun, 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 dun. so gotta bring a bow. That's coming. Yeah, yeah, uh, no problem. That's that's that, that's that's, the next that's my job. Is this? I'm the I'm the. And the, the well, let me ask you, Mister. After, after we Mr. get this Led gig Zepper. out of the way, then it'll be easy. It'll be probably adding. Mister Led three Zeppelin songs drummer man, what kit are you bringing out for this? So this, uh, I've I've moved away from. I was using the the Vista Light for I a know, while. That's less, less than my size, so and using that. It's a fun kit to play because it's the quintessential Zeppelin kit. Um, I got a uh, another Ludwig kit which was kind of a, a, a makeup of a green the green sparkle kit he had from 71 on uh, and I liked the bass drum I didn't like the rest of the drums so I've gone back to my tried and true pork pie kit which I had made back in 1998 and wow this kit is really nice and I actually had them uh, make me a couple of new toms that so now the kit is pretty much to I bottom would have not spec. thought you had that kit that long. Yeah, I know, right? Wow. I, 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 that's the one. The, well, there's two other. I have two kits that I maintain. One is the first drum kit I ever got, which is a Gretsch from '79, and then the other kit I have is the Pork Pie kit, and that's the kit I'm gonna do playing. a Led Zeppelin tribute band with a Pork Pie drum set. Yep. What the? Fuck it sounds is amazing. Wrong? It doesn't sound. No, nah, no. Nah, you got to put a, at least try to put like a Ludwig logo head on it mm-hmm. or something. Mm-mm. There's gonna be a drum head on it, but it, but it's not. It's it's unbelievable. It's an amazing kit, and Bill does a I'm great sure it is. job. <laughs> Actually, Nasty Nate had a pork pie kit the other night. Really cool looking yeah. kit. They're fantastic, and yeah. they sound like cannons. Do they sound? Do they sound okay? I thought that was your loud drumming. But <laughs> <laughs> no, they they sound like cannons. They're they're. <laughs> That's the. That I don't awesome. play that loud. You I do know. play that loud. No, I don't. Yes, you do. He hits like a big girl. <sighs> exactly. We already I hit like a big girl. figured that out. I hit like a girl. Big drums hit drums. Hey, well, you don't know. Anyways, all right, one last time before we sign off. Saturday night, Ron Rock Tavern, Diamond Star Halo, Moby Dick, ten, oh, $5 cover. $5. Starting at 10, ten o'clock. See, I got the, ten, yeah. get the thing mixed up a little bit. The great... Wonderful Dave Beeson will be there playing guitar. That's right. <laughs> Donkey Show. Al- something like afterwards. that. Afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Donkey Show in the alley. Yeah. Bobby. Bobby. Live, live podcast. Bo- Robert. With the Donkey Show. Robert P. will be there singing. That's Robbie, right. Robert Planto Zero. And who else is at the band? Is Robert and Todd Frenzel yeah, plays keyboards. Okay. He also will do harmonica on occasion. Um, he also plays. You guys. Uh, Todd is 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 really kind of a. A hidden weapon because I mean this guy plays every every instrument and he's incredibly talented. But he plays keyboards, and uh, he also does backing vocals. And then we have well, and then you have Halloween where he comes with a whole trunk, a trunk of, of stuff, costumes. That's right. He'll change five ah. times on stage. It's it's amazing. And then we have Steve here no. on bass, and yeah, he's no. you don't know it, but he's actually a very very talented lead I singer as well. And then uh, Dave on guitar and myself on drums. Wonderful, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody, get out there and check this plethora of greatness out <laughs> Saturday night. Plethora of greatness. Yeah, plethora of greatness is my new term, so I'm going to put right. that on a T-shirt. <laughs> plethora of greatness. Plethora of yeah. greatness. So it's got a good ring to it, Do you it? know what the plethora <laughs> is? <laughs> <laughs> we might, you know what? Instead of playing the music of Led, or performing yeah, the music of Led Zeppelin, it's going to be Moby Dick. Plethora of greatness. You, See, no, you cannot take you your shit. You can't steal my I shit. Can't? What are you talking No. No? What if I put trademark? plethora. I already trademarked it. <laughs> of zepness. What if I give you credit on the post? No, it's not like that. <laughs> I pay you money to use it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, put his name money in Money talks, bitch. <laughs> you know, plethora of greatness, Bobby Sharon, and then in, right, in parentheses right. under, under that. But he wasn't necessarily talking about us. <laughs> he, was talking, he was talking about something else, but we like that phrase. But That's right. You know. I, I, that's like a term that I say all the time. Though. I don't know why I say that, but it's, it's pretty. to me it's funny. I don't know. So, anyways. Anyways, people, we're headed out. Um, like I said, Saturday night, Ron Rock Tavern. Check it out. It's going to be really cool. Um, check it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, well put. Well yes. put. Just I don't know what else. Go there. I don't, we've already said it a million times. So, you know. Yeah. But it's going to be a cool show. I'm looking forward to it. Um, of course, Robert's new band, uh, Diamond Star Halo. Of course, the great Moby Dick. Um, my brother, Dave Beeson, over here uh, on guitar, which is the uh, new guitar player. Right. Awesome. And I was super excited to hear that he's playing with you guys. And, uh, Looking forward to it. Yep. Anyways, everybody, uh, we're out. Take care. Um, got one more podcast on Monday. Then I think we're taking the th- the, the um.
Thanksgiving holidays off, and then it's mm. the great 100th episode. Wow. Sweet. Yes. So we you got to call me from that. Just that'd be a call. You don't show. have to, but you know what I'm saying. Is that an interactive yeah. show? That one is. No, he's called me before. Uh, hey, yeah. we're bored. We don't have anything to talk about. Let's call David. He's gonna say something dumb. You were folding underwear at <laughs> one time, weren't you? I was. I was folding my underwear. <laughs> what are you You're doing? doing? Laundry folding I'm underwear. Like, well, you want to know what I'm doing? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm folding my underwear. That was that, that was last Christmas. That was our big Christmas show. Remember? Yeah. Wow! Is it no way? Yes, it was. It was last Christmas because it was me. It was Bi- it was uh, Bill Time flies, and Bill man. and Brett. We called a bunch of people on the line, wishing everybody happy holidays. And, and and this one over here was folding. I think it was your son's laundry, wasn't it? No, it was mine. And you're folding underwear. Mm-hmm. So Were you singing Christmas carols while you're doing it? I'll no, sing. but I mean, <laughs> no. But anyway, <laughs> no. Anyways, people, we're out. Take <laughs> hey, it's take Christmas. care of yourself. Uh, I end the podcast with the same thing every time. People, please try to do the right thing because Lord knows most of you don't. And with that, we're out. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And God bless. See ya. Bye.